It should be live. Live now? Alive. Oh. Means when you oh. hit those buttons, you can living temporary. Sounds like a plan. Kind of terrifying. Like, by the time it realizes it's alive, you, you can create live. Mm hmm. Uh, just give me a second to make sure we're king. That's fine, though. Oh, we got some hellos. All right, I think <gasps> it's working. Hellos to the hellos. Who the? Oh, we'll still call it say hello by Ewoks, but that, that's hello, my Ewoks. still going, still going strong. What'd you bring me? Uh, we have brought you today uh, reading Super Chats, because we are behind. It's going to be exciting. Um, between larger F-ups as you do. So, when's the next Batwoman? On the way is the best I can. I'm Sorry. so ready for Batwoman. I never thought I'd be more excited for a TV show. Yeah, we should we should organize watching the next few. I still I just see tweets every once in a while being like, "Oh my god, the newest episode was so." Just don't tell me, don't spoil my stories. Important experience, Batwoman. For me. Yeah, raw, fair, fair backed, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. yes, hello all. We're just gonna get right into it. These are the these are the super chats from beginning of EFAP eighty four, the legendary EFAP eighty four. That was a good one. I remember, I, I recall people <laughs> liking that one. So someone said we sound low. We should not be. We, yeah, I, I haven't yeah. changed anything on my end. Yeah, um, hmm. Uh, da, 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 that, the, the levels aren't peaking as much as they usually do. And when I say peaking, I don't mean actually like sounding like garbage, but OBS does tend to change stuff while I'm gone. So... I've boosted myself now, and I can boost rags to make sure it matches. Just keep updating me in chat. Let me know if uh, if things aren't the way they should be, because I constantly end up having to change it all the time. I've complained about this before. I complain a lot. Anyway, let me get started, I guess. Uh, first one is High Anomaly. Good luck today. He was in that debate stream. Uh, Tisms. We'll, we'll try and have him back sometime. Uh, People like uh, like like anomalies uh, involvement. I can't say that, that is definitely the case for everybody that was there. You know, I'm sure we're gonna be <laughs> having to read out some super chats about that. It's gonna be fun. Uh, poop with the door open. Nice. Mm. That's a way to start a stream. Merry Christmas. Mm. Sorry for the bad English. Oh no, you you nailed it. You nah, nailed Christmas it. is a good one. The best one. I I wouldn't go as far as best, but you definitely nailed the spelling. Is what I. Uh, hello, Massives. Glad I'm here at the start of the stream for once. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. See, and that's relevant now because it's the start of this stream. Wonderful. Hey, that's some forethought. Why is the lame sidekick here? Where's Adam? Ah, uh, sir. Reference to Sitch, not bad. Good stuff. Hello, N-Words. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. I've been waiting for this. Wow, they don't take the opportunity to do the, the Palpatine line. What does he say? Long have I waited in the, in the trailer. Long have I waited. Yeah, I've seen a lot of yeah, people reference that. That was going to be in the Fortnite cut, but they uh, changed it up. Also, I've boosted rags now as well. Oh, was I quiet for whatever reason? Oh, well, it's not your fault. I'm pretty sure it's my end. Oh, it, no, it's definitely not my fault. Oh, no. But yeah, no, 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 no. I, might, I may have boosted you too far now. Chat, just let me know. I'm keeping an eye on, uh, keeping an eye on responses. Eh? All good. Uh, yeah. And then someone said, I've been looking forward to this. You've got a lot of people at the beginning of the stream that seemed very happy that the debate was taking place. <laughs> they were so, I mean, that was us. We were so happy. We were excited. These were such good people to get lined up. Supposedly, it was going to be amazing. Who else could we have got that would have been better, we thought, as we looked at our plans as they were written on paper. Mm-hmm. Rags is too loud now. Okay, all right, all right eyeballing it here on the on the little levels you know i'll put my i'll put my microphone closer so that i'm louder and now you guys in the chat can turn the video down and we should be fine we'll just tell just tell them to get closer yeah put your ear closer to your uh your head put your ear closer headset. to your computer speaker mm -hmm. and lean in 
turn um, down the television, you know? Better. Yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, hopefully it's working, I don't know. Um, cough and clinch, boys. Cough and clinch. I'm not 100% sure. Give sitch hell, noms. Prequels are great. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Um, a debate on the prequels? Christmas has come early, which is objectively better than Halloween. <gasps> it's true. I will, I will fight the Halloween war sometimes, alone if I must. Chat's pretty, they can be all over the place, but sometimes they're on a, <laughs> sometimes they, they know what they're talking about. I, li I like the idea that you, you might have appealed to like, yeah, chat's usually right, you're like, no, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. There was a time, there was a time. <laughs> they're they're going to have to win back my uh, undying confidence. Hmm. Hey, Moolah, have you seen that they have the documentary for Rises of Skywalker out and they wanted to use the whole second Death Star in the movie? Oh. What? <laughs> the whole second Death Star? Is there, does anybody, anybody like in production, planet? just show the clip to JJ from R Return of the Jedi? Does anyone just, like, have it on their phone? Like, hey, JJ, I just watched episode six. Turns out okay. it, like, got vaporized. But JJ's like, what? When... <laughs> You, you would assume that the people who are making Star Wars movies are really familiar with Star Wars movies. They aren't. Nope. They clearly have no idea what they're doing. As evidenced by how amazing the sequels are. But you see that whole portion of uh, of the Death Star that JJ's like, more of it. More! And they're like, more. no, no, less. Less. I need to get that. I need, actually need to get that clip. I can probably use that a whole bunch for my Mando review. Oh. I got a pair of Mando <laughs> I've got, thinking, I think I can squeeze in some MST3K clips in there too. I know I can do it. You can. It's, there is no can or can't, there is only try. That's what Yoda said, right? There is no can or can't, there is only. Try. Well, you can, you don't have to try. If you choose to not try, then no try is done. Not try, there is only. What a what? Fucking weird dude, yo. Watch Academic Agent's new Star Wars video. Um, alright. Uh, let me take there. a look and get... Let me take a look, uh... In fairness, it would have been new two weeks ago. Academic Agent. Let's go to videos. Two weeks ago. Um... Looks like it could be. Uh, Star Wars in defense of Palpatine's galactic empire. Oh, I've heard okay. about that. I think. All right. I think is it is it the whole like it's not as bad as you might think if if you infer a lot about his his empire or something. They blew up a planet. Well. Maybe he's talking about everything before that. <laughs> Up to that point. I don't know, you know, they, they kind of genocided the Wookiees too. So it's A period like, yeah. of history from 2000 <laughs> yeah. to September 10th, 2001. Um. Oh wow, VLC player stopped my Futurama to tell me you guys are streaming. <gasps> wow, VLC is better than YouTube. Is that you, something if, you, wow. can, you can set VLC to do? <laughs> Wow. Like, excuse me, user. Your streamers are starting. Please, go look. Yeah, since YouTube won't notify you, I figured I might. Um, hello, Rags and Mola. I'm on my way to work now, so I have my whole shift to listen to you massives. Well, I hope your shift was great two weeks mm, ago. Uh, I hope that, I hope everything, yeah. <laughs> uh... Angel, Season 5, Episode 9, why doesn't he go to Europe? Doesn't... For what? Oh, well, it's, it's an Angel question. Oh. Oh, yeah, I, so I, I assume I know which character you're referring to. He explains it at the end of the episode. Um, there's a couple of things going on there. And then it gets reinforced uh, toward the end of the season. Very explicit about... Uh, I want to be nice and vague because that's a pretty big spoiler. Uh, so I'm just gonna, yeah. He he says if if it's, if you don't find it's a good enough reason, fair enough. Some people don't. Yeah. Um, once more, the prequel fans will rule the galaxy. No. Well, 
<laughs> I don't even know how to explain what the result of that debate was. The the people who wouldn't even necessarily consider themselves prequel fans had to become prequel defenders. So what does it mean? Hooray! What does I did it, it mean? We we did our best. And then on another stream, we had to do it again. <laughs> Hooray! People, I, all, you had people one are going to think that we. People are going to think that we think the prequels are good, which is why we have to defend them all the time. I think we did a good like, job of mentioning a lot of criticism of Cosmonaut 1, so... I agree. I'm sure we're in the clear. Good. We we gave him a lot of advice that hopefully he takes to heart. Because as I've said, it was crapperino. some people have said we're cowardly when it comes to criticizing any Star Wars outside of Disney. And I'm like, oh boy, mm. want to go there, huh? Go there. I'll criticize. I'll cri Luke has lesbian hair. There, I did it. Luke is only best friend hot. Han Solo is a uh, distant friend hot. I think right, I've turned it. into Han Solo on the inside, where I just don't care and I don't want to be here. Hello there. Hello. Screw Naughty Dog and The Last of Us 2. Hi, Rags. Hello. That yeah, seems fair. Uh, with everything that I've heard. Why is everything in the prequel quotable as evidenced by our prequel memes? I'm not sure exactly. I made a joke that it should be studied, but I think it actually should be. <laughs> like, figuring out what it is about the prequels. Uh, there's probably a lot of reasons you could cite. Like, a lot of people watched it when they were so young that a lot of the lines are nostalgic and fun already. That some of them are so stupid. And the, the joy of taking a line and recontextualizing it in like some kind of meme and then realizing where it comes from. What that it's scene actually simple. is. It's very simple. Yeah. It's it's easy humor, you know? It's where you can start at the end. You could start with the punchline and then work towards the beginning and it works. Can you cha challenge Jeb Nichols to Netrunner? Netrunner? I do not know what Netrunner is. Meme? Netrunner is an out-of-print collectible card game designed by Richard Garfield. That's probably not what they mean, I assume. Netrunner. And there's an Android Netrunner. It's a living card game produced by Fantasy Flight Games. I don't know. Board game? Mm. Who knows? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's no point in challenging Jeb to anything. She's not going to accept, I don't think. Uh, General Anomaly, you are a bold one. Yes, he is. I see Heelvis Babyface is in the, in the chat. Hello there. He, he super chatted a unicorn. <gasps> gay. That was pretty gay, dude. <laughs> uh, Rag says Team Tifa, but has he seen Barrett? I think so. Isn't he the... Oh yeah, I'm Team Tifa. Well, actually, let me check. <laughs> let me, let me, let me. Yeah, I'm on Team Tifa. There you are. Uh, All-time favorite EFAPs? So 50 is the common answer because it has. Oh, 84, obviously. It has so many. <laughs> it has so many good uh, EFAP-related highlights in in uh, 50. We get through like all sorts of classic things that happen. Why I'm like. 100 will never live up to 50, I'm sorry. Any expectation. But then then it splits apart into like favorite moments from different EFABs that were pretty good. I actually asked the Discord yesterday out of curiosity and 50 was the most common answer, but there was a couple of other ones like the Aiden one that led to Isle of Man. I think that was the Quinton yeah. response one, of course. That was, wasn't that 54? I think so, yeah. Um, yeah, 54 was there's the pretty amazing. The response to no bullshit was really funny because yeah. that person exists uh then there's the ro robot head uh captain marvel well the whole captain marvel arc the, like three different streams the the legal legal one the i am that robbie one like it, th those videos were great Lot lots of different answers um oh and 66 you know what 66 was good when we went over uh the rise of skywalker it's just that like leaks no, no, the the actual film, like when we had like eight of yeah, us or whatever talking about the film. Chad and everybody, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. What up, my O words? That stands for orcs. Oh. 
Horizon Zero Dawn beautiful. coming to PC. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hi, Mola. I don't mind super chatting, but as somebody who is privacy conscious, is there a way I could donate to you via cryptocurrency, i.e. Bitcoin? I have not got anything uh, set up for that, I'm afraid. But, um... Don't don't worry about it. If like if you don't want to use any of the um, YouTube or Patreon or, or sort of the different ways the Streamlabs even, uh, just just out of concern for having to give a counter or whatever information, don't worry about it. It's fine. Appreciate all the support that comes in, uh, regardless. But I know some people there's some people who will refuse to use a lot of platforms because of the fact they take certain percentages or because of the fact that they pick and choose who's allowed to get money and who isn't. Lots of uh, complicated decisions going on as as they do. Uh, hi Anomaly. Yeah, I'm sorry to say hi. Hi Rags. Hello. Hi Mola. Hello. And Psych mm. the others. Oh. Also Xmas. I know, right? <laughs> uh, hello Massives. Some brilliant news. As of yesterday, I'm officially a dad. The wifey's labor was shorter than the average EFAP. Oh, hi Rags. Oh, hello. Um, I should hope it was. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, uh, good luck with everything that comes with being a father. As we learn from Star Wars, it can be difficult sometimes. But I'm sure it won't turn out that way. No lightsabers involved or anything. Halloween never ruined Rag's grandma, just saying. <laughs> Christmas didn't either. <laughs> no, it wasn't Christmas that did it. It just happened on Christmas. It just, just happened. Uh, Mashallah, Ragibi. Hell, I suppose that means hello. Uh, Katif Kaliko wishes me, representative of the Chia sect, to impart good tidings to you, the representation of the Doguni sect. Doguni sect. <laughs> this is where the fun begins. Spank Akin Buttwalker. All right. <laughs> Spankakin butt walker. <laughs> it's over Spankakin. I have the spanky ground. Uh, we don't get annoyed, annoying overplayed Halloween music playing on every station during October. Halloween all the way. Southpaw knows what's up. He knows what's Southpaw's up. Southpaw's wrong. High five Southpaw. Christmas is better than Halloween, just like the prequels are better than the sequels. I agree with the second portion of that. Uh, can someone add Palpatine's theme to a video called The Jedi Philosophy is a Mess? Why can't you do it? Sounds like a yeah, fun project. Yeah, you do it. It doesn't sound like it's particularly difficult. Download them both. Put them together. Easy. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah, for reference, everybody, Metal Commander is 25 followers away from committing to the Movie Bob Challenge. If you want to see someone explode live on television, um... Go check it out. You can unfollow then and ditch him if you want. So here's the thing. I don't know if I want to see that. Oh, well, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I feel like it would be interesting, but yeah, no, I understand. If you don't want to see it. If you don't want to see... Uh, for his health, I have, I have serious <laughs> health concerns about him eating a five and a half thousand calorie meal is, all at once. Is he also... Mel, are you doing the time limit thing? Is it like once you once you pass the 90 minute limit? You just sort of go, well, I lost. Or do you just, like, stuff it in there? And you're like, no, I have to... For movie, Bob! <laughs> well, I did finish this. I mean, to be fair, five and a half thousand calories from McDonald's, that's probably a solid four dollars. So you wouldn't want to waste that money. And you got to make use of that time, Mel, right? you got to eat as much as you can, as quickly as you can, and then when you take that break, you can absorb that, you know, good, good like, hour of digestion, and then go again. Got to... This, this should be Olympic events. I would actually find it hilarious, to be honest. Um, open our countries. We freaked out over a different flu. Only very old and fragile die. Oh, my. <laughs> or are suffering no. from unemployment and hunger and hopelessness than getting sick. Cure worse than disease. I don't know enough about it to be definitive, but I know that a lot of uh, perspectives are clashing over this. A lot of people are getting angry at each other over what is the correct thing to do and how long lockdown should last. Um, hopefully we can just create some entertaining streams in the meantime. The movie, Bob. Halloween is Jewish propaganda. The T-I-L, I suppose. Uh, rags, give this money to Mola. <laughs> All right. Um. You, 
what? That was like me. I had, I have a stack of quarters here. Oh, thanks. And I was trying to I was trying to do like a money sound, you know, where I was taking these and I was passing them over to you. Oh, changing you. hands as money does. Take the money. Give them hell, noms. Ray J forever. Ray J forever. Ray, Ray J. Ray, Ray Jetster. Because and... I agree, her name should have been Ray Jetster. Dexter. Then again, maybe Dexter she's Skywalker. kind of she's kind of sullying the good name of Dexter Jester, isn't she? So I don't know about that actually. That man, that man did a lot for uh, the world. Uh, shout out to all the brave protesters in Michigan. Hashtag free Michigan. Hashtag oh god the economy. Toy Story 4 is literally the TLJ of Pixar. Um, I guess you'd say TLJ of Toy Story because Pixar could probably... I don't, I don't even think I've seen all of Pixar's films, but... uh, Yeah, I mean... Yeah, you know. Toy Story 4 was definitely... Yeah, I could see how people say it's the TLJ of... Uh, it fucks with the law, yeah. yes. It assassinates one or more characters, yes. And it yeah. um, shits on what I would say is the point of the first set of films. So, cool. Oh. Yeah. I feel it like relies if you, on bad humor and visuals to, you know, carry it through. If you do, if you tick those three boxes, as far as I'm concerned, you've mostly um, become the TLJ of the thing that you are. <laughs> yeah, it's just bad at that point. Uh, Muller and Rags, you're both wrong. Obviously, Oktoberfest is the best holiday. I, I feel like it's a fair contender, but uh, I'm gonna choose Halloween. Well, it's, I mean, Oktoberfest. It, it's ten thirty in the morning here so i could start drinking i mean i don't have to go anywhere probably very true i, uh, I could just you know and i just like halloween and christmas yes you can nope i mean yes <laughs> uh i'm watching buffy and i just came to the realization that if a vamp were to wear a bulletproof vest they'd basically be unkillable can't stick through that shit hi rags hello you can still chop the head off though and if you push them what into the you... sunlight, they go... Blah, blah, blah. Or drop them into a pit of lava. Yeah, if you have actually... One of those. So this is the thing about mystical creatures and how they die. If you were to drop a vampire into lava, it would eventually die because of the head being separated from the body. That's the reason it would dust. Uh, at least by Buffy rules. It wouldn't... And that makes you wonder, can you chop off the top portion of its head and everything below the neck and would it be alive? <laughs> because the separation of the head from the something this would be, they, they try to remain vague because it's just like hmm how exactly does it work? Good old vampires. Also it ends with Halloween forever. Absolutely. Sure, we gotta have something, we gotta, we gotta have our Christmas preparation holiday. I don't know. We had preparation. <laughs> Let's go spook people and prep for being old dice. Yeah, we gotta get all that out of our system before it's all happiness and cheer and wonderfulness. Um, Sitch, here are 100 shickles for giving the best interaction to my super chat. FYI, the plague in the US, and I'm... Sorry, the plague in, is in the US, and I'm from a town that is very in the past. The middle class doesn't exist, and there is a national geographical segregation based upon race and religion. All right. <laughs> wow, well, the more you know. Uh, would Rags poop with the door open if he lived with Uwu Bulge Nuzzler? Also, hi, Rags. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want. It doesn't matter who it is. I don't want them to see me. I was going to say, isn't your position that you be closing that door if you were alone? I do. Yeah, when I am alone, I do close it. But even if Uwu Bulge Nuzzler was just casually walking around, you'd be like, oh, better. Anyway. Yeah. Gosh, guys, very clear law. That's um, so so clear. It's so obvious. I love the podcast. Also, Christmas is better. Well, well. Yeah, it is well, better. Well, wellity, yeah. wellity, wellity. Yeah. The Last of Us Two can go burn. And hi, Rags. <laughs> Hello. Uh, if you're still in contact with Wolf, ask him the Christmas Halloween question. I actually did. He uh he said he'd go with Halloween, but uh I don't know if that should be counted or not because the whole like he's trying to not be involved at all in any of you fab at this. Point. Uh, hail EFAP, hail NOMS. That's fair enough. That's a, that's a NOM link, by the way. I've, I've noticed mm -hmm. the connection 
I believe Noms is a is a is a nickname. And again. OT as a trilogy is better than prequels. I agree with that. Yes. <laughs> uh, hey Ragu Chan. Uh, Hello. Hashtag Christmas is superior. Dun dun dun. On behalf of all Muslim cats, I declare Christmas better than Halloween. Halloween is heresy. At least Christmas celebrates a great prophet. Damn. I mean, I don't know. You can, you know, the Pumpkin Man or um, Jack Skeleton can be prophets of Halloween. They're pretty cool. Uh, the, you know, I know that they're not the greatest of people. Some of them murder a lot. What's, what's, what's some of the... Some of the Halloween characters? I was about to say, like, what's the one with Lance Henriksen? The pumpkin... Pumpkin head, I think? It's like a weird demon pumpkin that kills people. <laughs> uh, uh, Halloween can be weird. You know, it can be weird. Uh, um, I think he was... Let's see. The dog who saved Halloween. Oh. Was that you? Yeah, that was... No, that no, no, it wasn't me. That was, that was where... Uh, that, that was Lance Henriksen was in that really yeah the dog who saved halloween in, uh 20 oh 11 uh, did you say it's like lads henriksen halloween movie <laughs> maybe yeah i i, I meant pumpkin heads like a series of halloween spooky horror movies with a, the dog a, who saved halloween that's that looks pretty spooky pumpkin head i think it was like you can summon pumpkin head to kill people for you and then eventually he'll kill you or something i can't after his son dies in a hit-and-run accident, Ed Harley, Lance Henriksen, seeks revenge against the teenagers responsible. With the help of a local witch, Florence Schaaf Schaufler, I don't know, Ed summons the vengeful demon Pumpkinhead to hunt and kill a group of friends. But when Ed discovers a bond between himself and the creature, he begins to have second thoughts about employing the vicious monster. He fights to end Pumpkinhead's murderous rampage before it's too late. See pumpkins, man. Even once. Dean Kane was in. Uh, Dean Kane was in. The dog, dog who saved Halloween. Yeah. Superman himself, huh? Yeah. His corpse just rests in a pumpkin patch. He doesn't have a pumpkin head. True. In the images, because I did see this film, I just forgotten it. it kind of looks like a ripoff of Alien. But Really Pumpkin weird Head, one. the 1988 movie. He's a uh, yeah, like he, you know, it's mean for me to say rip off of Alien. I'm not, you know, I'm being unfair with that. But you you could see the the, the it looks a little like you could sort of see an influence there, right? You know, I'm not crazy. A little bit. I mean, he looks more like Alien than a pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. That shot makes him look like he's kind of alieny. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's a not a bad monster. Yeah, you uh, you know, you give him the old summon, kill a few teenagers who are annoying you, that sort of thing. Oh yes, the headless horsewood movie with Johnny Depp. We watched that. It's so funny we watched that. <laughs> That's something we've watched. It's like, yep. Ichabod Crane. Uh, even though I like the prequels, also high rags. Hello. That, the way that reads, it's like they're saying. I like the prequels, but I will still say hi, Rex. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, right. 60 pages into a massive book I'm writing, and EFAP is the reason oh. I'm confident I have a strong quality standard for evaluating it. Thanks, lads. Ooh. Oh, my. Excellent. Wish the best of luck to you, sir. Uh, syphilis is better than the sequels. Um, to be honest with you, I would watch I mean, the sequels I'd... instead of gaining syphilis. Myself, that's yeah, my opinion. Yeah, I'd rather, yeah. I want to keep fucking. I, I'll watch. I would if I had to watch the sequels every time I fuck or before, not during certainly, and that would be too much. But I, I that's a mm, asking a lot. But I still, yeah, I might. I don't know. It's a toughie. Price of poon. Hello, chat people. Mola, Rags, Efab guest, and hopefully not Jay. Aww. Hey. <laughs> Christmas is better. Suck it, Halloween. Halloweeners. Hey. I actually like oh, that. Oh, Halloweeners. Are you saying that I'm an orphan? Rags, how could you? Well, I don't know, man. That's I don't the make fate. The rules. Yeah. 
Gosh, I'm yeah, massive. Yeah. How long before we reach the subjectivity tubes? Bruh, we inside of an EFAP. I don't, e I don't even know what this is referencing. So we have Halloweeners and Chris Massives? Chris Moids? Chris Massives, that's probably it, yeah. Chris Massives? Yeah. Uh, hi, Rags. Would you please fly to Australia so I can sit on your face? Thanks. Oh, drive a hard bargain. <laughs> I like. I actually am sort of one of these days planning on going to uh, Australia to uh, uh, gonna go visit the green hang out with top hats. One of these days. Shout out to Mike Kaklasa. Oh, Kaklasa. Oh. Damn. Kaklasa. Why? What did he do? Well. A lot of people still think his prequel videos of not only a badly made, but that had bad influence on people's ideas about the prequel. Um, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's the thing. I, I haven't seen him in so long. Harm. We should watch him and then report back to the. Yeah, we could start one. I mean, it's it's a possibility for an EFAP for EFAP coverage, but who knows? There's plenty we have to look. That's at. That's the thing, though. It's not only something that I'm pretty sure I like and think is relatively good, but it's also like over an hour and a half, which... Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but we have trouble covering anything over about 40 minutes. <laughs> it only took us like 10 hours to do Cosmos uh, yeah. video. Uh, new YouTube notification arrived, uh, but the stream is not in mass subscriptions. Well done, YouTube, but not today. Um, but today, is it... I hope so. You never know with these sweats of things. Christmas is better than Halloween mm. because you get candy and presents. Also, it has a tree. Checkmate, long man. What? Yeah. The only ha the only what what happens with trees in Halloween? They they have their magic vines and they rape people. I was gonna say they often come alive and kill people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, press clap chat because EFAP kicked J finally. Yay. Glib, your drive tributes are amazing. Hey, there you go, Glib. This is this is before the debate started, I think. Because <laughs> everything's still really happy. Yeah, they're being nice. Yeah. Everyone's all everyone's all all, <laughs> all glimmering, happy and hopeful. I was caught shoplifting while being carried by Dracula, Dooku, and Duckula. I was charged on three counts. Alright. You know, that's good to know. Yeah. What is everybody's uh, objectively poorly written film they love? Mine is League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, though Hyde was played well, though. So I always it's say Batman a, and Robin. It's been a long time since I have uh, seen that. I remember liking it, but it's been so long. Yeah, obviously, I think pretty much everybody agrees on The Room. It's like... Good old The Room. Batwoman, uh, of course. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, my brother says Tross is cool. Now I have proof he is adopted. Prequels are way better, but I forgive Sitch. Also, hi, hi. Well, hi, hi, hi. It says hi, hi, Hal. All? Hi, all, I think. Okay. Yeah, hello. I think it means it's supposed to be hi, all. Yes, hi. Uh, was watching AI as the stream started. Good luck, dude. Hi. Um... Or Mr. Pucklinet. Pucklinet? Oh, Plinket, but Cuck. Mr. Plink. Mr. Cucklet? Cucklet? Cucklet, Cucklet would be it, Cucklet? yeah. Mr. Cucklet videos, Plinket? I have to say, very gay. Damn. Uh, please don't say the prequels are boring, because that's not good enough for an argument. The sequels did more to destroy lore than the prequels, i.e., Space Battles and Force Ghosts. Well, and that's the thing, you can just say the sequels are boring. Anyone can say that. That's no, boring. I'm bored. Yeah, boring. In fact, um, there are several films in my lifetime I've watched with, like, heavy action stuff, and I'm just sitting there like, mm -hmm. explosions, people running around. I think that, uh, boring can be conflated with, uh, not a lot is happening. When you know, two characters talking about how they feel about the Movie Bob challenge can be more interesting than any explosion. I agree. Um, the EFAP Mike Demon has claimed Anomaly as the new victim, it would seem. Mike Demon? Yeah, the Mike Demon does get around. Oh god, the Disnoids are back. 
I wouldn't call Sitch a disnoid. He, uh, he's, yeah. he's not a fan. He ain't a disnoid. Yeah, he doesn't like the new ones. Certainly not glib either. Don't worry. No, no. That, we we try to make that clear. It's like nobody here likes the sequels, guys. Uh, this is gonna be good. Also, hi, Literature Devil. No, it was Sitch. Uh, prequels have better music, characters, and action. Um... I mean... Music, character, and action. Music, yes. Um, characters, yes. Action from a set po like a, a position of the, it makes more sense the action, but like the I don't know the quality of the CGI yeah. is obviously better in the sequels, but I don't know if that counts for much. Because I was thinking action was the one was sort that was kind of mulling over because music and characters definitely unquestionably, but in terms of the action, uh, tough. Uh, the question last time was sequels versus the prequels. The prequels are better. That doesn't mean they're objectively good or well written. They're full of tism. I agree, there's lots of tism in the prequels. Uh, the prequels are objectively good. As you can see, the, the chat are now getting riled up. Here it comes. The tidal wave arrives. Here arrival. it comes. Bonjour, oh, you big decked colossi. Would you rather, once you've opened a door, you can't close it, or once you've closed the door, you can't open it? Open a door, you can't close it. I was going to say, surely you, there's several times you could be trapped if you could never open a door you've closed. Yeah. Wouldn't want that. Though I would like to flip that power the second I'm being chased by any person trying to kill me, I guess. That'd be great. Yeah. If you're a, yeah, it's definitely a chaser's market. And I love the prequels, tisms and all. Um, English 102, we were studying Othello, which is a very well-written kids, uh, we were studying Othello, which a very well-written, kids were laughing the whole movie at the dialogue, so yeah, that's Shakespeare for you. Oh yeah, that's the one with, um, uh, um, I think it was 1995, let me double check, yeah, with Lawrence uh, Fishburne played Othello. And um, uh, who played Iago? I gotta double check. I, I forget who played Iago. It was Kenneth Branagh. Ah, he played one. Iago. It was that was great. That was we should watch. We might need to watch that for EFAP movies. Oh boy. Oh, I loved. I loved. <laughs> you want a gun for Shakespeare? Easy. What was the movie? I don't know. I think we'll get some enjoyment out of it. I remember really, really liking it. Oh yeah, I'm up for it. Funny. Um, I'm very pissed about the Last of Us 2 situation, and will be streaming my playthrough of it so I can rip into it live for everyone to see. I'm actually uh, thinking about that myself. I might stream Ooh. the first one, close to when the second one comes out, just as a fun little gaming thing. And then talk yeah. about why it's so overrated. <laughs> and then... Uh, stream the second when it comes out because I still don't know much at all about it happily. Um, they'll see a lot of tweets referencing things that I don't understand, but all I know is that everyone fucking hates what they've done. Ooh, Ooh boy, so exciting! Oh, very interesting. Another thing ruined! Hooray! I would say the prequels' writing is a mixed bag. Great ideas executed horribly with other flaws. While the EU has patch ups, the films should stand alone. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, film, any film should stand alone by its writing. I mean, it's funny because if you go by the standard that any third party stuff should and can be considered, or can and should, uh, it opens up this, ins like, you can never really judge anything because now we have to look at every single piece of third party before considering it, I guess. Yeah, and they, they could just fix anything whenever with out of source material and it'll be a mess. They'll just tweet, they'll just use Star Wars, it'll, it'll just be a tweet, they'll just tweet about it. Yeah. Uh, can't even argue that sequels are self-aware cringe. I mean, some people could. Okay. I don't think they're self-aware cringe. <laughs> no, I, I don't They either. thought they were good. They tried legitimately hard and failed spectacularly. Um, also, the reason why Anakin doesn't kill Palpatine is the same reason why Hamlet didn't kill his uncle. Admiration. Well, I just he wanted access to the powers, right? Like palpitism, mm -hmm. give me them life saving powers, please. I want some clarification. Are you guys arguing from a narrative perspective or a dialogue perspective? Because that framing could change my opinion. Um, um I'm, I'm assuming they mean the both? difference between narratively should they be 
saying what they're saying or how effective is the dialogue in a meta sense. I, know I think the writing I think the writing certainly leaves a whole lot to be desired. Yeah, a lot of the people will um pretty bad. Will argue that a lot of the language as much as it's ism uh makes sense to come out of Anakin. And so can you you know it's it's hard to be definitive about the criticism compared to like for example, the Death Star's a bad place. There's so many ways you could break that down, like fucking Ray. I don't know, it's just but uh, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't break down how awful the dialogue throughout the prequels are. I watch well, EFAP to unwind, but since I'm stuck in quarantine, why is Black Ops 2 still sixty freaking dollars? Pretty sure that's Activision. Don't reduce them on ever. I'm so sad. Uh, if you EFAP movies cats, could you bring Fenna on for his expertise to point out just how bad it is technically? Who would love to see him on EFAP again? Yeah, it's a potential. Probably a couple people we yeah. could bring on. I feel like Jay Longburn should come for that. Yeah. I feel like her reactions to cats will be funny. <laughs> uh, Adam, use your ears when watching a movie too. Adam's not in this one. Wasn't even there. Um, does co coherent plot mean good? I feel like the bar has been lowered so much and a lot of people just think making enough sense to recognize it makes good. Well, that's an interesting Not question, right? Um, um, we've, I think for us, we've been able to recognize that, sure, co coherent only gets you to like a 2 out of 10 by itself. That's why our Bat we'd say Batwoman is a 2 out of 10. It's, or like Crisis on Infinite Earth is a 1 out of 10 because it's sort of coherent. When you say coherent, kind of? do you mean that we can we can see a progression of some kind happening? <laughs> it's like that's what's what we get that with that. Like it's like yeah, I could I could uh, understand through what what is happening and what is being said some level. Yeah, of, like time is progressing yeah. linearly forwards. One scene happens and then another. You can sort of tell what's going. You you can you can tell that events are occurring. But um. Yeah, you know, when, when we talk about, like, what is contradictive, what is having to be inferred, and how much should be inferred versus uh, supported. You know, uh, if I say there's two people fighting over there, and then Rags invents a whole history for them both, and why this incredibly high-stakes fight, and that's all I ever said, and then Rags is like, that's a good story you made, Mola. I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like this, uh, So you don't end up like that, but simultaneously... If I said, you know, that fight's happening over there in the background while the big fight is happening here with these two characters that are all about this, 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 and then Rags is like, boo, bad story, I don't know what the people in the background are fighting about, then I'd be like, you don't need to, you can, it can be whatever you want, it doesn't matter. A big fight going on. So, you know, it's the interesting discussion about uh, how much needs to be inferred for you to understand everything that's happening in the movie. This is, you know what this is about, Rags, you know what this is about, don't you? What's this about? Yeah, about taxes. About taxes. About, about space taxes meant for trade federation. About a certain faction's motivation right now. Oh, here we go. I I can't wait. I can't wait for the. Uh, is this where we are then? Where we All are. All right. <laughs> the taxes is not the conflict. It's the Sith plot. Um, I would pretty much agree with that. It doesn't matter any specificity on the taxes. Simply that there was a dispute in relation to taxes. Yeah, I mean, I would still say it was it was pretty important to the movie, though. For sure. Uh, but what was being taxed and by how much really necessary? Would you agree with that? Sure. Yeah, I would agree. Could we get it in the movie without it damaging the movie? Possibly. I don't. Yeah, I don't see why we it couldn't. Probably only take a couple throwaway lines. Yeah, and I don't even want to about how and where I'd put it in, I'm just saying that we could probably do it. Long man bad. Yes, sir. Hi, Rags. Hello. What's your favorite ELO song? Probably... Huh. I don't know if I have a... It might be... So, Don't Bring Me Down, maybe. Uh, Mr. Blue Sky is one. Julie Don't Live Here Anymore. 
um uh, time there's a bunch i um it's hard it's hard to pick a favorite it really is hard to pick a favorite but there's there's so many good ones that they've done uh but i don't know if i could pick a favorite though um uh diary of horace wimp is up there there's a bunch Uh, it's relevant in the uh, Palpatine is a central figure there, and it was his opening move to get to the chancellor position for the sympathy vote. Uh, the Emperor was the good guy, if you think of the DS as a nuclear bomb and Alderaan as Hiroshima. The DS? What's the DS? The DS? Let me get the context one more time. The Emperor was the good guy, if you think of the D Death Star. For some reason, I was thinking of prequels. So the Death Star is a nuclear bomb, and Alderaan is Hiroshima. Um, oh, so you're saying, like, they were gonna, they were blowing up Alderaan as a sort of, like, they're trying to force peace in the end of the war. Um, is, that, is that the unironic argument? <laughs> Alderaan wasn't even... Wasn't Alderaan <laughs> peaceful? Like, blowing them up is retarded, if, if that was your goal. It's like, yeah, we're gonna blow you up as an example. Um, I wouldn't... I don't know if I, I don't know if this is a hot take, but whatever. Uh, I think it was wrong for them to blow up Alderaan. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I I feel it. So yeah. Uh, this just says wait for it. Dot dot dot. Seen Sargon's recent Star Wars videos? I've seen a couple people say that they're frustrated with them. Um, and I I haven't watched them myself, but the ratings seem pretty strong. Like I, I don't know. I'm assuming he makes arguments that the Jedi are hypocritical, or I we can check them out. Yeah. Um, so I, I went through my, um, went through my, uh, phone here to look at some, uh, ELO, just to pull up some favorites, uh, and I came up with, uh, some more telephone line, turn to stone, confusion, roll over Beethoven, calling America, four little diamonds, here is the news, and twilight. So those probably round out my list, I guess, of favorites, but even then it's not comprehensive. They did so much good stuff. Alderaan deserved it. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, excited to listen to this later. Have to work. Hi, Ragsamola. Hey. Hello. This just says, yeah, that video was gay. I'm not sure which one, but I agree. Why do you need to know everything in the first two minutes of the movie? Are you kidding me? Oh boy. Here we go. Movie doesn't need to explain obvious things as well as irrelevant things. I mean, I, it's not like I would consider the taxing specifics irrelevant. And I would probably honestly find them interesting myself, but I don't think we need it. Like, if, if, if I found out that, um, let's just say this is how it worked for a second, right? In the film, they, they established that Palpatine pushed for um, the Council and Amidala to uh, question or, or even deny the Trade Federation um, the amount of taxes that they're having been putting on Naboo while telling the Trade Federation to do that. And so they get into conflict, and uh, that's how he's orchestrating this from the get-go. I assume that's how that works. And then you could even go further, and he's like, I think we should go before, but just like, the, t the Trade Federation want 50% of all income and transactional isms. They want that much. And then Naboo are like, no, we will go no, long no higher than 35% or something. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't think we really needed that. Uh, guys, share this stream. It isn't showing up in the subs or even on Mola's channel. It can only be accessed through links or notifications. Well, just whether or not YouTube likes us. <laughs> it seems to be that case. Because uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like, the last stream uh, seemed to work. Not only did it work, but it worked for a while, judging from the engagement. Unless it was because people really wanted to see us uh, respond to that Cosmo video. They were just, like, absolutely just... Spreading it around like wildfire. Um, EFAP Mike Demon has targeted Rick too. I guess that confirms he hates the prequels. He hates them. Glib, for me. God's sake, calm the hell down. Mm -hmm. Now I know which part of the debate we're at. Bruh, Sitch and Glib came to fight. The moderately great debate. Also, high rags. Hello. 
Just give Sitch the point about the treaty and the deal and the politics. This is one of TPM's biggest glaring weaknesses. He's got you on this point. I disagree. I don't even think it is a I glaring weakness. Too. I don't think it's a glaring weakness at all. I think it's extremely reasonable to infer what it's about. And even then, you don't need the fine details of it at all. It works perfectly fine without it. The gay cowboy needs to relax a bit. <laughs> so this turned into a blood, bolts, blood sports debate all of a sudden. Sips copy. So I agree with Sitch <laughs> about this. You guys should check out blood sports debates if you think that that EFAB got anywhere close to what blood sports is like. Yeah, that was nothing. That was, that that was, was very much nothing. nothing. Even the Sitch, because uh, I checked out Sitch streaming after uh, some of it, he was confused. And he, he was on Twitter as well. He was just like, why are people saying this was like blood sports? Because he's, he's been around debate and stuff like that for a while. He was just like, this was so tame. And I was like, yeah, it was, but... Yeah, if it actually got to blood sports, we would have cut it. Yeah, we, we would have. just told him to fuck off. No. Wouldn't allow, would not have allowed it. Uh, one, make deal with Sidious. Two, blockade Naboo. Three, question mark. Four, make lots of money. Then just daddy no. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Uh, daddy uh, no. Take Naboo hostage, force Republic to remove taxes. It's two plus two. Force Republic to remove taxes. Force Republic. I don't know if it's that easy. If you can just force Republic to remove taxes. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Nabu was an inside job. Technically. Just yeah, because they came from the planet core. Wow. The planet core. Uh, Glib just argues for no reason and makes no sense. Glib's losing the audience. Uh oh. Hi, it, it'll get better. It'll get better. It'll, it'll get, get better. better, yeah. It'll get better. Uh, think I'll skip this EFAP, but take my money, boys. Why, thank you. Oh. Very kind. Uh, the prequels are bad, and you should feel bad for defending them. Oh my. Super chats are now going to be very, like, <laughs> it's like the anger, the fury. This is how you become a part of the dark side, guys. Whatever happens, I hope everyone here can still be friends at the end of this debate. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. And uh, I would say, if anyone didn't know, the, the stream ended pretty amicably. Everybody was uh, yeah, pretty happy. Yeah, I think so. Very it's hard friendly. to stay angry for that long. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, I think, what happened. It... it it mellowed out completely, and the conversation evolved as it progressed. Do you need to know exactly why World War One started to care about the characters in 1917? Granted, I'm comparing a historical film and a sci-fi. I was going to say, I feel like there's a lot of variables to go over with something like that. Yeah, I I don't need to know. I, if, if the story's about characters, then I certainly don't even need to know who, I, you don't even know need to know what war it is and who they're fighting. Yeah, if, if they kept it ambiguous in as to yeah. if they were even British or German or American, whatever, that wouldn't even matter if they were just, it was supposed to just be about people dealing with a scenario. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be totally fine with not knowing who they were fighting against or any of that stuff. It could be purely fantasy, and it worked just fine. This is The complication comes in where it's like we're looking at the Senate dealing with different policies being enacted or different events happening. It's like, oh, so we do need to know what these events are to know if the Senate is responding in a way that uh, either makes sense or at least in a way that we can understand. So I can see why uh, the politics are much more important to the prequels than the state of World War One is to 1970. Yeah, and it depends. If it's Sometimes it's important, sometimes it's not. Um, personal motivations would be more important factors in a lot of aspects. Probably, I'd even say most aspects. Um, but for the prequels, I think we get, especially with the Phantom Menace, at least in that aspect, we get we get enough. We we definitely get enough. It's like Schindler's List for children. <laughs> okay. Schindler's List for children. I think. Uh, I don't think knowing what the Trade Federation wants affects the plot. Well, I think it's good to know how they were yeah. they were in, involved. Like, it's good to know why they're involved. You know, if if it was just they were manipulated, it'd be like, oh, but it's they were manipulated because uh, they wouldn't have done this on their own because they're cowardly. They were given strength and they and they like money, they like resources. Very nice like and thin and it's simple. Very reasonable. Yeah. And they could have just thrown in a couple throwaway lines. Just a little this, little that. It would not have taken them much time at all. Because oh. Lord knows there's a lot of 
pointless scenes in the Phantom Menace, so yeah, just I don't, uh, maybe this helps sort of smooth it all out. But like, if it were my story, I would want to add more for all of the characters. Pretty much, I want to, I want to add, I want to stuff that dialogue up with all kinds of little tells for what everyone's thinking and feeling, while also pushing the plot along. I sure um, as hell wouldn't split up certain characters. I'd remove some other ones. There, it, it, I, I'm much more happier to work within the confines of the story if I had the ability to change characters and the, the detail work. You could still make a good story out of it, absolutely. The Trade Federation is a megacorp so powerful they got a seat in the Senate. They get taxed by the Senate, so they blockade a planet in protest. I'll be honest with you. I, um, if you've gotten I, I that from know. somewhere, it wasn't the film. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know that. Uh, they they're so powerful as a mega corporation, they get taxed as though they're a planet in the Senate. Is that what you're saying? And that their their protest is in the form of blockading Naboo. That seems weird. I from the title crawl, I assumed that what the film was going for was that Naboo and the Trade Federation. As well as a couple of others here and there having dispute over trade, uh, trade and tax. Yeah, I thought it was between them. Um, either way, the dispute has caused this. Yeah. So, uh, what's the name of the trade route? What's the name of all their ships? What's the name of their leader's mother? How much information do you want? Good lord. Newt Gunray, I'm CIA. Unfortunately, you don't get to bring friends. Uh, Ten for Mall and Rag. I'll be skipping the stream but listening to this on Monday. Keep up the good work, my Ewoks. By the way, Rags, any insight on laser sights for handguns? Thinking trigger guard models from Crimson Trace. Uh, let me go get mine to look at the brand that it is. One moment. You... People with your guns and lasers. What is this? Star Wars? <laughs> so the one that I have on my Glock 17 is a TLR-6. Uh, I think they fit on 19s as well. And I really, really like it. It looks really good. Uh, and it's a laser light combo. Uh, you can have them both on or any of them independently and it has held up really really well i would highly recommend it i can't remember how expensive it was i don't think it was too bad but i, I that's what i have i really like it i recommend it uh so if you wanted to know the one that i'm used that's uh that's the one right there hmm oh boy what's uh boop, boop. Luckily, nothing like that has ever happened with countries involved in the UN, our closest parallel to this. Yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of... Uh, this, is, this is pretty much why we're able to infer what all of this can and would mean. Just when we're told, like, there's a trade dispute or a taxing dispute, it's like, oh, we know about them. We know what they mean. Uh, the Clone Wars are some of my favorite characters in Star Wars, especially Captain Rex, so I thank the prequels for giving us the clones. Well. Yeah, the prequels get a lot of well-deserved credit for expanding the universe in a very, very big way. They gave us the really sandbox. They... Lib, have a Snickers. Snickers? What if it makes him more angry? Mola, has anyone said your avatar looks like Darth Malgus from the Old Republic? No, but uh, I could totally see someone in some form of a Sith thing... Being similar looking to, to the avatar I've got. I, I, I can see. Goth Objectivist. A time sensitive joke that will be read in five hours, giving Muller an idea of how far he still has to read. Also, a question mm. for the guest is gone. The question for the guest that is gone. I get it. But uh, no, it was way later than five hours. We're looking at, what was it, two weeks later? <laughs> it's like, just well, a week and a half? I don't know. We, we get there eventually. Maybe Palpatine shouldn't have let Vince and Jules run the Naboo-teak. Then we wouldn't be in this mess. So Vince and Jules, talking, talking Pulp Fiction here, run the Naboo-teak. 
gonna I'm just gonna nod my head because I, I don't quite get it and I'm disappointed in myself for such things. Hello once again, Muller and Co. Hello. Muller, what is your favorite tism and why is it sextism? Um oh my goodness. I don't know, I think racism's still my favorite. Yeah. It's, pretty funny. it's up there. Also it's, it's really hard to decide. Yeah, it is hard to decide. There's so many good tisms. Also, Rags, now you live in the Mass Effect universe. Unfortunately, it will be three weeks until the Reapers show up. What do you do within this time frame? Um, Bill? I guess I probably <laughs> find some way to... Repair? Uh, yeah, I guess if I had time to prepare, I would try to find some very uncharted... Or just some world in the middle of nowhere. Specifically try to make a stealthy camp as possible, bring as much supplies as I could. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Then again, the Reapers do get defeated, so I suppose it's a matter of, with that knowledge, I have to choose like where I want to sort of get stuck in terms of locally, because I think the Mass Effect relays get blown up. Uh, but, uh, yeah, something like that. Uh... Ditch. No outside source, then uses outside source. So, I think this may have been some kind of mistake from people, because he used the wrong word, but Sitch doesn't even know of the outside sources, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, so, like, and... He said, the... um, he said Clone Wars to cite something when he meant Attack of the Clones, and if he did use an outside source, I, I completely missed it myself, but as far as I so knew... So, they, he they wasn't used even... outside sources as, like, examples? of what they were talking about or referring to, but I don't think they either side really used outside sources as, like, a definitive right. um, thing. Yeah, from what I remember, there was no major breach in that sort of rule. Yeah, I don't think it was that bad. I think it was all right. No stakes. Muller, are these guys re uh, retards? Oh, I got it. Retards. <laughs> Well, stakes is another complicated thing because a lot of people consider them subjective. I don't really. I think that uh, what is at stake is something that we can actually define, like power levels and uh, people's lives and resources at risk of getting destroyed or generated. Like these things can be decided on and seen, but how invested you are in a scene, like a lot of people will label that as it's low stakes if they're not invested. I would just I want to make sure that uh, separate them out. Yeah. Do people not have right to their own sovereignty? You'd think. Hello. It's, it, I imagine it'd be hard to operate a republic if uh, people didn't get that. Yeah, that's the um, the thing about the blockade that I think we could have definitely used some more flesh is to is like how exactly they can block communications. How is that legal? block travel and block trade and remain legal. It does seem like surely they're breaching something. Yeah, they assert that it's legal and I I accept it for the story, but man, that is a huge stretch if you want to if you're trying to convince me realistically that or at least believably that that sort of thing is legal. Um, hello, EFAP62. Stopped in to ask Rags if he'd ever go back to Fallout 76. I've heard it's possibly good now and was wondering if that's true. Uh, probably not, honestly. There are just other games that I'd rather play, and I, I don't want to jump into new games now. I've sort of found a good rotation of games that I really like playing that take up my time, and I am doing the work on the video, so I don't want to add more stuff to that. One of them cycles going on right now, huh? Yeah, I do have one of those nice cycles. I know what you mean. A lot of my time is it goes sleeping, eating, standard stuff, and then like uh, editing, all streams, you know. Yeah. Family tisms. Yep, pretty much all time is filled up now. Um, just started listening a few minutes ago. I take it no one was allowed to reference any external sources outside the movies. Pretty much no. The obvious uh, problems with stuff like that is like. Uh, I don't know if you if you like. I didn't understand why someone did something, and you go, "Well, if you read this novel, it tells you exactly what it is." So shut up. It's just like, oh, mm. because uh, UN always manages to deal with every local crisis so fast and efficiently. Yeah, I mean, the idea that the the Senate is tangled up in red tape and bureaucracy is something I can fully believe. Uh, that that portion is not a problem for me. 
And I actually do think it's reasonable that they were like, send someone to confirm whatever's going on at Nabu. Like, yeah. Probably want to do that. But obviously then it presents an issue that by the time all that gets sorted out, Trade Federation's plan will be complete. And Amidal is like, lol no. Lol no bad. Don't try it, X... K X H F K. I have the F D Dolkra. That's that's the guy who speaks in riddles again. Oh, how riddles. about riddles? Why is listening to Star Wars politics more interesting than studying for my AP government exam? Anyway, guys, I hope I do well. And hi, Rags, Muller, and any guests that are still here. Stay safe. Hi, hi. And yeah, luck with your yeah, um, we, we, we AP government exam. Uh, we're not rooting for anyone. Well, you can, but you don't have to. It's just a story. You don't have to root for the characters to have a good story. I think, yeah, you could probably have um, a story where, uh, like, two villainous people are trying to outcompete each other, and you wouldn't necessarily have to root for them. You would just be interested in seeing how the conflict sort of plays out. I, I can agree with that. I'm trying to think of an example of where I didn't root for the characters in a story at all. Yeah, give me some um, give me some potentials here. <laughs> a, I'm sure a, it exists. A story where you didn't root for any of the characters? Yeah, you were just sort of curious to see how it plays <sighs> out. I'm sure I know they exist. It's just hard to pick them out because they're so unmemorable. Uh I that's the thing, I can't even say Batwoman because I want Jacob to be alright. Ooh, someone said the prestige. There's an element there, I think. You're watching two people spiral, and you don't necessarily... But I oh, think yeah, yeah, yeah. An argument can be made that you want them both yeah. to be better people. You want them both to work in a way that doesn't hurt others. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. But, um... People are saying Joker. You're not, like, actively rooting for one over the other a lot of the times, because they're both kind of shit. They're both I th terrible. I think the Joker one is uh, perfectly fair. You could have someone saying that I didn't watch the films, uh, you know, intently because I was uh, rooting for Joker. I just wanted to see how the story played out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, Lib, this is frustrating the hell out of me. Just because the system is flawed doesn't mean we shouldn't care about the people in it. Well, that was Lib, I suppose. I'm not even 100% sure of uh, if he said we shouldn't care. About... He might have said that, I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, they did offer to send a team just like Iraq. That's why Amidala voted no confidence, because that would take too long. Yeah, I suppose what she wanted was the Valorum to try and send out people to help Nabu immediately. But, I mean, yeah, but it's totally reasonable that they had to check and see well yeah because the trade federation true. representatives were like whoa this is ridiculous this is nonsense what the hell you need someone to confirm what she's saying because this lies this is bullshit and we wouldn't want it to be that someone in the senate can basically just go my planet is totally under attack please send people to go help it and then you do yeah. it's like well we need don't just be like that that's weird simultaneously she uh feels as though someone Stronger. Well, I mean, she's being puppeteered by uh, Palpatine at that point to say that like he's weak. That's why he won't be doing more than what he's doing. I still think that whole. I I think that whole scene really kind of needs a rewrite in terms of mentioning things and sure. what you would really say. Will you defer your motion to allow a commission to engage in? He's like, let's send a message to Naboo. Sir, we can't. Communication's being blocked. Huh. Interesting. Sending investigations to Iraq led to the U.S. lying about WMDs and an illegal invasion, and nobody did anything to stop the U.S. Prequels are very realistic. My, my. Um, hi, Fock Faces. Uh, I think this is their way of getting around the whole... Block thing. C N T V Cunt Bows. Maybe. Hello. Maybe. Rags. Maybe. Bows. Hello. Hello. I got into a heated debate with a friend because I said movies can be objectively bad. Please help me explain how you can judge movies objectively. Thanks. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Just, um, um, I mean, the easiest way would just be definitionally. The, all the statements you make about it have nothing to do with how you feel about it. 
Yeah, you're just telling them you're just going by the references, you're going by the dialogue, you're just looking at the scene, seeing what the information is. Um, you're seeing if it is good or not, if it makes sense. Yeah, if and it's consistent with itself. And the easiest ones are like unreadable language that is definitively providing information, or like things that simultaneously exist and don't exist, or just your most strict contradictions. If you provide these to them and their responses, it doesn't bother me. It'd be like, yeah, that's not what we're talking about. But okay. Um, the knife, for example. The knife is a really easy one to run to. Good old disappearing yeah. knife. And if anyone says, oh, it's just a disappearing knife, it's like, saves their life. You can't really get more significant than the protagonist being saved by the plot. Yes. A detail might be tiny, but the repercussions and implications might be massive. Imagine someone should make that somehow. It plays out the guy stabs her in the back, she goes, blah, and he like it pulls the knife up through her torso then stabs and stabs and stabs and she just falls over, blood everywhere, and Kylo is like, Jeez. Well that's it for Ray. More The Chad prequels versus the Virgin Straw Men. <laughs> Chad prequels. Uh why did the Empire build the Death Star? Why are they the huts if the Empire controls everything? They don't control everything. Well, I think the person is trying to say that they could ask questions all the time about everything, um, and that you infer a lot about a lot of stuff. I would need to look at the dialogue in terms of how they talk about the Empire's presence on Tatooine and stuff like that. That's why you go for information. You don't, ha you don't have to guess. You can find info if you seek. You got him, Sitch. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Why are we even talking about Star Wars? Nothing is coming out. <laughs> Things coming out, yeah. Uh, if the Empire controls the whole galaxy, why build the Death Star? I mean, it's implied that the Rebellion only exited after the Death Star. If this is a legitimate question... Um, the idea that they, they say like uh, it's to basically be like Iron Fist style nobody can it would be like simultaneously holding a gun to every person on planet Earth's head and saying um, and you're pretty distant and safe and you're just like yeah do everything that I say now or I will kill you and then obviously they blow up Alderaan which would be most evidence you could possibly have of that being a real thing like oh what do you know do what they did, and uh might happen to you. And they say uh, something like the local senators have been dissolved, so everything is basically under Palpatine's control. Um, can we all agree that Mewtwo has a nice and thick butt? Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, I think it's reasonable. I, I definitely don't disagree with that. What the hell do you mean, Sitch? Palpatine is the central conflict they are working to overcome, even if he isn't outright. He is the Phantom Menace. Why should anyone care about what happens to Naboo? Suppose you don't have to care. Yeah, you don't have to care. That's on you. This is going to be the most controversial EFAP, isn't it? I would say it beats out the Spider-Man debates. Um, yeah. What else I, <laughs> comes close? I think it's our lowest rated. Yeah, is it lower rated than the Jetty one? <laughs> I don't know for certain. Because the Jetty one got, like... I would vote to hell from Jetty fads, but uh, still think that would actually might be higher rated than the prequel debate. Because the prequel debates it uh, at, a, at a nice sixty. Yeah, I want to say that the Jenny one is like sixty-five or something. Not so great debate. It wasn't wasn't even an EFAP, but I think people liked the not so great debate. Yeah, because it was so one-sided, and the other guy was so sad. <laughs> it was entertaining in that weird way. Mm-hmm. Well, this is the thing. It seems like lol cows are something of a preference for debates. Yeah. Do they even say in the movie that the Trade Federation were pawns of a Sith Lord? Well, we see it. We don't... Yeah, they don't have to say it. We, we, um, we can clearly see that. Unless you're asking, do the Trade Federation tell anybody that they were pawns? And, and, and I imagine that... Um, we could have had a scene, or we could infer that there would be a scene that the uh, palpatism 
would have been like, fucking don't give me up whatsoever. But then again, I don't even know that, what would that even do, right? Yeah, I was about to say, that wouldn't really change much, depending on how many people are in it. I would imagine that Sidious, or I would imagine that Gunray and the people in charge of um, uh, the Trade Federation, they're okay with what the Trade Federation's doing on Naboo anyway. I mean, if you take out Darth Sidious, this is still advantageous for the Trade Federation. And if they told them, some other dude told us to do it, be like, what dude? It's like a guy in a cloak, a spooky ghost. <laughs> like, um, I don't know. Uh, Trade Federation equals the Mandarin from Iron Man 3. Uh, how? Oh, because he's a puppet. Uh, Sitch raised a lot of good points. I'm beginning to understand why, even as a kid, I couldn't really get into The Phantom Menace. Yeah, he, cer he certainly raised, he, throughout the stream, he, he had a lot of points. Some some I considered good, some I considered less than good, but, uh, you know. Had some yeah. had some good stuff from the defensive side as well, and some stuff from me and Rags. You know, it's, it's all over. Lots of stuff. Lots of other stuff, too. Takes. Evil Sith guy wants to take over the Republic. Reminds me of when America invaded Japan during World War II. Some Japanese soldiers threw themselves off of cliffs to avoid capture uh, by the Allies. That is what my brain cells have been doing this past two and a half hours. That's a quote from Wolf in the Not So Great Debate. I remember that. Uh, glib was a mistake for this debate. Oh. Also, clip gl kick Glib, he's being gay. Hmm. Glib uh, sounds like a man who would like RJ's knives out. Glib, where did the prequels touch you? I think I think he's annoyed people now. That that would make sense. You think that's? I think it's starting to get to that, uh, mm -hmm. that point. Why oh, is boy. the Empire evil? Uh, because because Palpatism wants complete controlism. Those are traditional Jedi robes. This is painful. Oh, uh, for the argument for why all the Jedi wear robes, I guess I'm not one hundred percent sure. Uh, I'll be right back. Use the mm -hmm. uh, it shouldn't be hard to explain why the prequels are bad. What the fuck is happening? Well, you, you know, you know it goes. It's, debates can go any way that they are gonna go, and uh, it, you know, it just depends on who's who's saying what at the time. Different people argue in different ways. Uh, I'm going to spend my time doing something better. Enjoy absolute hell for the foreseeable future, guys. <laughs> Very well. Muller, I was at the store, and I saw a movie called The Man Who Killed Hitler and Then Bigfoot. Can you do an EFAP movies on it? Also high regs. The man, I, think I'm, I think I'm familiar with that. Some YouTuber I would have watched either covered it or mentioned it. Possibility, yes. Lib and Sitch are willfully obtuse, worse than Major Lee and Yezen. Worse than Major Lee and my goodness. Uh, All right. There was a high rags, but. Oh, hi. Fear of a Jedi is very justified. I can agree with that. Um, Tarkin yeah, sure. equals Newt Gunray. Ola. Wait, did I say that Tarkin and Newt Gunray are the same thing? <laughs> I'm not sure what I meant by that if I did. Uh, um, that uh, is an odd comparison. I guess each controls an army. Yes. Each listens to a Sith. Yes. Each one is evil. Yes. Um. All right. The droids are easily defeated, so there's no conflict. The stormtroopers were easily defeated, so there's no conflict. Doesn't work that way. I mean, we both the droids and the stormtroopers are shown to have the capacity to end lives. So, you know, it's... I mean, I don't want to hash that out again. <laughs> we already know where that's going. I just, uh, I think the less seeds we have of either faction acting like fucking idiots, the better. Um, Trade Federation invaded on Palp's orders. The goal is to create the Separatist movements. Palp's promise power if they invade. The danger is it's a giant army. I don't know if Palpatine really needed to promise him anything. Yeah, he... 
he's he's is, is a basic move that they're apparently going to absorb Nabu into their like ownership through this treaty thing, which is something I have an issue. Like that alone is um quite a bit for them to want to you know work with. Like honestly, this is kind of part of the problem. But if if the logic is you can hijack an entire system by getting the leader of the system to sign a thing, I'm surprised more people aren't doing it. Yeah, it's really weird. And plus, even if we look past the Phantom Menace, the Trade Federation and the Separatists have a legitimate reason on their own to not be a part of the Galactic Republic and to split away. Like, they don't really need Sidious to have a motivation or a reason to do that. He's just helping them along. Um, they cut through the droids like butter. These are the guys whose trilogy has the Stormtroopers, right? Uh, these are the guys whose trilogy has the st Oh, they're saying that, um, just because they cut through like butter doesn't mean that they're not threatening, because the stormtroopers are disabled quite easily a lot of the time. Oh no, the stormtroopers, they're disabled. I th I, know, I know what you mean by that. I do. I'm following. Through. Thumbs up. If Valorum had done this officially, then the victory would have been tipped off, or the Viceroy would have been tipped off, sorry. The Trade Federation is in the Senate. The Trade Federation's in the Senate, but so, he, he told Palpatine, he told um, the count, the Jedi Council is clearly aware because they report back to uh, the two Jedi report back to them and they had to get their permission to go. Queen Amidala knows. Um, plus, I don't think that the Trade Federation could stop them from sending Jedi to negotiate. Also, if if you're saying then that they did this because they didn't want the Trade Federation to be tipped off, implying that they can catch them in the act, then why isn't the Jedi's word worth more? Yeah, it's very strange. Uh, is the droid army more effective at s than stormtroopers at this point? Um, are we comparing every iteration of the troopers from all the mainline films and Mandalorian versus the droids? Oz. They're pretty much on level, I'd say, right? Because the droids have the benefit of huge numbers. Yes, they have huge numbers. They do have, you know, decent equipment, vehicles, droidekas, um, things of that nature. Really, it only seems to be that the the typical battle droid is kind of shitty. Yeah, the battle droids seem to be spooky, and droidekas seem to be really good. Yeah, um, and, I mean, the Stormtroopers aren't bad, so, I don't know. I mean, if I had to fight one over the other, I'd rather fight the droids myself. The droids seem goofier. So, like, you have to fight a Stormtrooper or a Battle Droid. I would choose a Battle Droid. It seems yeah, like I'd definitely they have better weaknesses. rather, yeah. But, you know, one... Droidica or one Stormtrooper, I'll take a Stormtrooper. The issue is that they seem to play really fast and loose with how competent Stormtroopers are. Yeah, it's almost like which iteration of Stormtrooper am I dealing with? Because fucking hell, if I'm dealing with a Mandalorian one, I could stand in a hallway with him for 10 years and he probably wouldn't hit me. Yeah, they'd probably shoot themselves and each other by accident. Because the Mandalorian just makes them, turns them into actual jokes. They're worthless. And even the First Order, is they're really shit, too. I just want, like, competent ground forces <laughs> in these armies. Uh, yes, you can have a skilled protagonist in the movie. That's not bad writing. The Jedi power level makes sense, and they also fight Maul and Droidicas. I'm pretty much in agreement with that. I don't mind a protagonist being very powerful. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that. One Punch Man. Every antagonist is ineffective. Uh... Pretty much entirely true, yeah. There's a lot of reasons why uh, One Punch Man makes something that sounds like it wouldn't work, work. They work really hard to do so. Lib and Sitch need to stop interrupting then demanding explanations. It was uh, it was free flow, and uh, I know a lot of people felt like the interruptions were unfair at some points of it. But um, it's such I definitely a, prefer it. It's such a POV thing, though, because, like, if, you know, again, with, with 2 plus 2 equals 4... And then you cut me off 
after I'm, before I'm allowed to start my next point to say that 2 plus 2 is 5, if someone's like, wow, you interrupted Muller and you're fucking wrong, it doesn't matter as far as Rags needs to understand the first part is right before he can continue. So he yeah, needs to I'd interrupt. Much rather, yeah, I'd, I'd rather points were addressed as they were brought up instead of getting this whole big spiel and then just having someone have to go back to the very beginning of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so I just... Uh, it's tough. It re I know it's tough, especially from a, a listener's perspective, because you're just like, no, you're being poopy poops. But uh, you've got to try and work through it. It's it's the tough part of the debate where you're back and forthing again and again, trying to find out what the core problem is and then figure that out. But uh, it's not like I'm saying there was never um, interruptions that... Wouldn't be considered bad faith. I, I couldn't know that for sure. But, you know, a lot of people, when they speak for even longer than 30 seconds, the other members of the, the debate, if you will, start to wonder, it's like, wait, what even am I going to be responding to at this point? Which parts? And how? Uh, hence why we are very against, like, fucking half-hour segments each sort of thing. Yeah, Pointless. best to just one thing at a time. At that point, you just watch their separate videos on the subject. Yeah. Like, why have them in the same room? Do not use George Lucas quotes. That is outside material. Use movies only. Um, so that's a fair criticism uh, yeah. to try and say that the plot makes no sense because the author said so. I would actually, even though you'd be like, surely that's definitive information. I'd just be like, well, if you can prove that it makes sense, then all we've now got is that the author's kind of an idiot. Yeah, the author can be wrong. Yep. Would, uh, always want to push for that. However, I think it's infinitely fascinating to look at the author's comments on some stuff. For example, JJ saying, yeah, whoops, I should have had Leia hug Chewie. Whoops. <laughs> so all the people who are like, no, it makes sense, because Chewie needs to go cry on his own, okay? It's just like, uh... Even, even JJ Abrams said he fucked that up. And if someone said, well, that's irrelevant, he's just, uh, you know, he's just the author, I'd be like, okay, sure, that's fine. I just find that it's pretty interesting that, uh, uh, you wouldn't be convinced by that information. I mean, good luck making an in-universe reason for that, anyway. They try. They try. Yeah, they probably do. Uh, the Trade Federation aren't the main antagonist. They are the army the antagonist sent. To be honest, Loki isn't the main antagonist, and uh, either Thanos was? I mean, neither Thanos was? Um, but yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. The the primary antagonist is the spooky ghost. The phantom menace. Uh, in One Punch Man, the antagonist is boredom. To a degree, yeah. Thematically, you could, you could definitely make that. Uh, the Jedi had to flee. How does that make the Trade Federation ineffective? Good question. Good question. Anomaly Senpai is finally on EFAP. Respect to the prequels. Hi, Rags. Hello. Like, how a small group of teens blow up a Death Star? Teens? Small group of teens. I mean, there's, a, there's a handful of veterans in there by the looks of things. Plenty of adults. Jedi can control your mind. Don't know what that's in reference to. Is there an example of a good army out there? In Star Wars or in real life? or Clones? I mean, the clones are pretty good, yeah. They seem effective anyway. I mean, of course, a lot of them die, but simultaneously, they sh we have a lot of shots where um, their, their kill ratio seems to be 1.0 or higher, sort of. Thing. Oh, yeah. While droids, I mean, on average, have like 0 0.1 or some shit. Uh, they're misappropriating protagonists and giving them alternative antagonists to try and claim that it makes no sense. Misappropriating protagonists. I uh, are we talking about how in Phantom Menace a lot of people say there's not a protagonist? I don't even I'm not 100 percent sure of that comment. Misappropriating yeah, protagonists sure and giving either. them alternate alternative antagonists to try and claim it makes sense. Not 100 percent sure. So most Jackie Chan movies are terribly written because they are comedic elements in the combat. Oh, so this is an argument about tone, I suppose. Again. Very hard to argue that uh, you can't be invested in the Phantom Menace because it's just, uh, you know, uh, some of it's goofy or whatever, or some of the fights are goofy. All someone has to say is that they didn't find it goofy enough to not be invested. I yeah, I can definitely be invested in characters in a comedy. Sure.
Death Star 1 was destroyed by a bunch of pilots. Wait, if we're comparing that to the end of Phantom Menace, um, I really need to... Yeah, that's that's bad, my dude. That's not... No. No. Not the same. Literally, Anakin by accident destroys the ship. By accident. He accidentally does it. He doesn't mean to. He does it by accident. That is totally different than a, a plan that is made by a bunch of people that is carried out successfully. And you know what would have been way better as an easy fix? Oh. You have, like... Anakin is like, we gotta get out of here, R2. And then he's like, scan the area. Uh, where's the opening? And then he goes, beep, boop, beep, boop. And Anakin is like, the core? Where's that? And, you know, just some kind of like, R2-D2 is like, by the way, we can destroy the whole ship. And I'm not saying this makes it good. I'm saying it's a tweak. <laughs> it means that Anakin deliberately destroyed it, not accidentally destroyed it. It would be so much better. Just just crossing. Just crossing that that line. From accident to some kind of a plan, it's so it's such a big difference. E Fab eighty four, the not so greater debate. This is painful as hell. The droids pose no threat during the entire trilogy. They slaughter Jedi by the dozens in Episode two. God, what the hell is this? That was brought up as a reference, and then they uh, squared it down to you have to specifically talk about Phantom Menace. Even then, the, the Jedi run away from them and only usually attack them when they're in smaller numbers. I always got yeah. the impression that that was the whole point of the droids, is that they're not too good individually, but in great numbers that they're pretty scary, which is why Obi-Wan jumping down in front of them in Revenge of the Sith always strikes me as retarded. Yeah, that was dumb. He um, was a bold one. He was a bold one. <laughs> In, was a bold one. In Phantom Menace, as far as droids are concerned, Jedi are invulnerable. Sitch are correct. What? Except for droidicas. What do you mean? They ran away from it's the droidicas. Droids. <laughs> if you want to specifically talk about dro uh, the battle droids, then I can mostly agree, but even then, a lot of the battle droids they killed were all in like a small group. And then what I'm suggesting is a scenario, for example, this is just off the top of my head, I don't know if it ever happens in the prequels, but if you had even a hundred Jedi against thousands of droids, they probably wouldn't win. Do you know of any time that may have happened? Hundreds of Jedi against thousands of battle droids? Yeah, did that ever point prequels? Hundreds of Jedi? No, I don't think hundreds, no. The equivalent of the droids would be Cybermen. Cyber, but spell S-A-I-B-A men. Now, Sitch, what does Star Wars have to do with Dragon Ball Z? Oh, so that was like third party, using... but that was a comparison, yeah. Yeah, it was a comparison. Um, which I'm totally fine with. Mm -hmm. Wait, Infinity War made a good few jokes, but still contains its tone. Uh, the Clone Wars made some jokes, but still contains its tone. Yeah, which is why it's a difficult conversation. I wouldn't deny that uh, with tone. It's only when you get blatant stuff, like massacre, then joke, and someone getting their head chopped off. It gets very confusing. Especially with the music, it's like almost lighthearted and then tragedy piano and then fine. Man, this is jarring. Jar jarring. <laughs> <laughs> Would changing Mando's complaint to that's not saying much, you can turn over a rock and find three X stormtroopers fix Bill Burr's character intro? Oh, uh, so rather than saying... rather than criticizing his aim, you're just saying that they're a dime a dozen. Yeah, there's a bunch of them still out there. There's a bunch of ex-stormtroopers. I was sure would have liked that better. Yeah, I, I, I would find that uh, better than being like, lol, they can't even shoot. Yeah. I smell a prequel apologist. Well, it really depends on where you stand, it looks as if. Because uh, chat seems like they've got Two sides going. I'd say there's like five sides. It's like people who don't yeah. care, people who think it was bad but still think the prequels are bad, it's people who think it was bad and still think the prequels are good, and you know, all the, the rest. Um, my favorite shadow people, a handsome doggo and a wild glib. Will there ever be a Jazza and Shad stream? Ja Jazza? Like J? Is that what they mean by Jazza? I, I feel like J and it. Shad must have been on the same stream at some point. Surely. Like, the, were they on the Star Wars stream? 
Whichever one that That's was. That's a good question. Was Jay on that one? 66 or whatever that was. Surely they've met. I feel like... Yeah, yeah, Jay was on that one. Okay, there you go. And that was a wild stream. That was a wild stream. And that was a breaking down. There was a lot to break down. It was, yeah. Oh, the, it, apparently it's Shad's brother, Jazza. Okay. Uh, I yeah. mean, yeah, we're not against that, probably. <laughs> I don't yeah, know why, why we not? would be. Uh, so before anyone say dramatic sad scenes in PT are funny, watch EFAP Mini of Lord of the Rings. A study says if you watch movies with your friends, you don't take them seriously despite how good or bad they are. Okay. You don't need to say a study says. <laughs> it would just be like, yeah, when you're with friends, you could spot a movie while watching it. But simultaneously, as we've done many times, you can watch a movie with friends and also shut the fuck up and watch it and take it very seriously. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and you know, obviously the Lord of the Rings minis, we're, um, we're us looking to talk and have fun with them in a way that's not usual for Lord of the Rings. We usually just watch them. There's an action movie trope called Inverse Ninja Law, whereas one ninja is an unstoppable killing machine, 12 ninjas are cannon fodder. Do you think this applies to the Jedi? No. Really? Well, I mean, no, you'd think more Jedi would be more deadly. They, uh, I guess they're referring to the fact that so many of them died in the second film, but I just assumed that we were dealing with, um, you know, the complete kill tree of Jedi. We got the good ones, the great ones, the okay ones, and the shit ones, and a lot of the shit and okay ones died. Plus, they were surrounded all over, so... Yeah, while you got people like Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon in hallways fighting individual droids, like, yeah, I can believe that pretty much all yeah. Jedi would have beaten. Um, they say in A New Hope that they let our heroes escape. Yeah, that's uh, something that a lot of people uh, forget about A New Hope. They're like, the fucking Stormtrooper's stuck in that movie. Wouldn't there be more tension if the droids were more dangerous? Is the same logic JJ used when he made those Death Star Destroyers? Yeah, I would, I would argue that it's a little bit more complicated than that, right? It's just like... Yeah, I think so too. The The Death Star thing was... I think it's just for plot. Whereas it's it's one of those if you're facing down the enemy constantly over and over, then the things you do in the... Ta well, I guess one's strategy, one's tactics. But I will say it does bug the shit out of me. That, you know, troops just tend to be idiots in Star Wars now. Really, really does bug me. I hate it so much. The stormtroopers were ordered not to kill them. Tarkin let the heroes get away. The stormtroopers are mocked because people don't understand the movie. In my experience, people usually reference Return of the Jedi as much as I do understand people can make that mistake with A New Hope. Usually talk about the fact that they were defeated by teddy bears. A lot of people go with that. And they miss yeah. quite a bit in Empire, in Bespin, when they're chasing Leia and Chewie and Bando. The Stormtroopers are like, pew, miss, pew, miss, pew, 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 pew. I don't actually think they land a single shot um, on anyone, even though in Return of the Jedi they do land a shot on R2-D2 and Leia. Leia, yeah. Hey, enough monkeys and enough typewriters, you know? Yep. Sitch and Glib are terrible at this. Replace them. Ah. Uh. There are two stories going on in Phantom Menace. Trade Federation are antagonists to Padme, Amidala, and Naboo. Darth Maul is the antagonist of the Jedi. I mean, a lot of people would argue that there's not even multiple teams. It's just all are mostly fighting to prevent this whole thing that's happening, and this whole thing that's happening is orchestrated by Palpatism. After you watch Empire, then jack off to gay porn, but your mom... Your mum in enters the room. Uh, the feeling you get is the same Gunray had when he knew Qui-Gon is Jedi. <laughs> okay. I will take your word for that. Stitch and Glib are reminding me of the guy from the not-so-great debate. <gasps> Shad says, uh, Return of the Sith duel is best in cinema. Psych. Oh, well. Uh, can we have a debate if EFAP84 is the worst FAP? I mean, I, I'm happy for it to be conceded. I, I don't really mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm, fine with, uh, I'm fine with that being the case. Batman beat up Joker, the Dark Knight. Does that mean he sucked? 
Oh, you're saying that uh, Batman is far superior in terms of physical power compared to the Joker, so... Yeah, well, this is what I meant about more than just that, what creates stakes, tension, and... Besides, I don't even... I don't even agree. Like, it, you know, you got two Jedi are in a hallway and three Doritos turn up. It's like, oh shit, they're in trouble. Mullet, would you mind uh, doing this again with the same two guys and I will take them to school myself? Because there's a lot of info getting lost in translation here. Uh, as for the future of potential prequel debates, Rags and I shall have to do our homework in terms of what we should do next or what we should try next. Who knows? Um, Who hen knows? Henchmen aren't as effective as the protagonist. All movies ever are now terrible. What's what I mean? It's pretty common for foot soldiers to be defeated by our uh, hero characters, especially if they have powers. Or, you know, really good equipment. Uh, the destroyer droids could be very expensive. Agreed. Yes, of course. There are yeah, two I, things... I totally... Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. There are two things that must be done. One, kill the Super Chat Overflow. Two, watch Hardcore Henry, Dumbos. Oh my. There it is. Uh, you compared the battle... More. Ah. More. You compared the battle droids to Nappa. I would compare them to Cybermen. Uh, to compare to Specialty Group a base troop is disingenuous at best. Yeah, I think that's about the TBZ stuff. I, I, I'm guessing, because I have no clue. Glib makes me want to listen to Major Lee. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Glib, how could you? Uh, what about how they need to destroy the command ship to destroy the droids because they overpower the Gungans? They did beat the Gungans. For whatever that's worth. Yeah, I, I think that was brought up by, and they were not impressive that they beat the gun. I think that's... The... I agree with Star Wars Girl. My soul is dying. <laughs> I think this is before... Hooray! I don't know if this is before or after she's jumped in, but we can, we, we're, we're sort of seeing a timeline. I can kind of see it. Uh, Muller. Maybe it depends on how many are fighting a Jedi. PSA. But they're not threatening. Numbers are, though. Just saying. Yeah. Numbers are threatening. That's how it works. Absolutely. One child with a knife ain't gonna do much, probably. But a hundred children with knives coming at me? I'm fucking running away. <laughs> like, get away from me, yeah. children. I feel like that's gonna be a big picture now. Long bad running away from children with knives. Huh. Uh, the Trade oh, Federations hey. are patsies. Why would Palpatine be honest with them? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect he tells them anything that doesn't get him exactly what he wants. I mean, he kills them all in the end. Yeah, he's kind of a dick to him, in a way. In a way. You feel sorry for him. Lord Sidious promised us peace. We only want more, more, more. Uh, Trade Federation taking over Naboo, legal or not, 100% helps Palpatine. Yeah. Absolutely. They could assemble various planetary militias or defense forces for a liberation fleet to Naboo. Absolutely. Uh, in my expectation. There probably wouldn't even be a battle. They would just show up and the Trade Federations would be like, this obviously isn't worth it. Uh, wouldn't the testimony of two Jedi count as evidence? That's something that I find weird about it all. I don't know how much they would You would worth. think that they would, they would certainly have a lot more weight to it than it does. If the Senate were to be like, nah, liars. Um, I'm trying to think of what would like what would happen. I don't believe these Jedi. They have reason. I mean, I think we should have just gotten that scene. That scene would have been super useful. That would have been nice. They hated Glib because he told the truth. Comcast internet is down. We better nuke Russia. Internet is down in Russia. Invade them. About that, but that's not good. My Lord Mola, I believe you have a mutiny on your hands. Also, high rags. Hello, get Anna on here. Number one, we want Anna. Pick the Disnoids, bring Anna. Hashtag we want Anna. There ain't no Disnoids in that stream. I would, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know who the Disnoids are supposed to be. Envoy will be paid of, everything will be covered up. Uh, don't worry about the bitch babies in chat, Mola. They don't know that debates don't have to be civil. Cack panel, please sing Hose Mad, thanks. I mean, they don't have to be civil. It's just preferable. 
<laughs> like, I yeah. think it's always prevalent. Um, but the idea that it can get emotional and stuff, I did preface that at the beginning. I was like, it's probably going to happen, and it's okay that it happens. We shouldn't, like, the second anyone's voice raises, like, hey, down. But, um, calm, I, I, it, calm it down. I don't mean to undersell how uh, angry certain portions were or anything. Just saying. It's all right. It's okay. We'll survive. We'll move on. It was okay. Um, any speculation of what if shouldn't be allowed as it doesn't happen in the movie, just like EU books, etc. It's safe to assume other plans would have probably had other counter plans to cancel out. Uh, I guess it contextually would matter what one we're talking about specifically. So we just, the whole film is Palpatine getting to the Chancellor role. That's pretty much the point of Phantom Men, as well as obviously finding Anakin. Um, bad writing equals contradiction. None were brought up yet. Oh, I think that, um, I feel like we, we were, we highlighted, a, well, Sitch highlighted a couple of, uh, certain contrivances before. Obviously we had the, uh, the Will of the Force conversation as a result of that. Um, you know, uh, the ship was destroyed. The Queen and the Trade Federation new ambassadors were coming, and Palpatine and... The Queen discuss it openly on their hollow call. The only secret seems to be that they're Jedi. Yeah, that seems... Yeah. Yes. And the people who took them there weren't Jedi. They were... It's, it was a Republic cruiser. Does that mean, then, that the Senate were aware that ambassadors were being sent to settle a tax dispute? They just didn't know that Jedi were sent. Sometimes it's hard to, to iron it out fully. Yeah, absolutely. Phantom Menace seems like a masterpiece after this. Oh, my. Even if you have testimony, you still need evidence. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of you'd think the Senate would take it a lot more seriously if two Jedi Knights or the Jedi Master and a Padawan were like, hey, this shit's going on. They actually tried to kill us. It's pretty fucked up. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I suppose. Yeah, by the way, the Trade Federation, they tried to. Yeah. That's the thing. That, that, that whole segment of the movie where they go back to the Senate and report all their findings, like, man. And you think they would be in more constant communication with the Senate once they get to, like, Nab or Tatooine and stuff? Could have, yeah, you could have had the Jedi were on the panel, the, the Naboo panel. Exactly. And, uh, and they're like, uh, an attempt was made on our lives. The, the invasion has begun. This planet is suffering. We must act. And then the Trade Federation people are like, "Why would we attack Jedi? Why would why would we try to take a planet or something like that?" It's like, "This is incredible. What the fuck?" Point Instead, it just isn't even mentioned, and I feel like it would have been. I feel like it should. Yeah, I think I think it could actually uh, be a cool scene. We could have a lot of a lot of tisms going back and forth. We could even throw in a line, maybe in the Senate, about how they're not entirely trustworthy of the Jedi. They're like, you guys always pretend like you can just solve the problem. Who knows why they tried to kill you, or some shit like that, if that's even true. A lot uh, to explore, a lot to do. Imagine, imagine the Trade Federation managed to get a some kind of recording with Qui-Gon like, burning down their doors with his lightsaber. And they're like, this was happening... Uh, because they were like, de it seemed like they were trying to kill us. These Jedi were sent yeah. to kill us. What was up with that? And the the, the Jedi, Jedi were like, ah, oh, they tried to kill us first, and like, no, there's no proof. Yeah, you know, that's you, ridiculous. You could, you could do, you could do stuff like that. Chancellor Valorum sent you to kill us. Uh, Sitch and Glib two for two, winning. They hated Glib because he told the truth again, huh? Glib has been shouting since the title crawl, but it's the chat that needs to chill, huh? Sure. Chat doesn't I mean, need to you, fucking chill. Yeah, I was gonna say, everyone can chill, it's fine, but, uh... But, like, chat doesn't get rowdy. Just see how fast chat was traveling in that debate. It was just like, buh, 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 buh. All the cameras were under maintenance, duh. Can we all agree that General Grievous was badass in the 2003 Clone Wars micro-series? He fought seven Jedi and one, killing four of them. Yeah, dude, he was badass. Sounds pretty badass, sure. The cameras were clearly collecting boulders. Damn. The 
poison gas hmm. is much more excusable than any James Bond villain doing the same thing ever. The Nemodians are amateur bad guys at best. Yeah, I, I'm not. I don't think it's ridiculous that they can pump gas into a particular room. It's probably something. Yeah, do. it's weird, but like I guess they design their ships like that in case they <laughs> really, really want to kill negotiators or something. And maybe someone comes aboard who's like, "I'm gonna kill you," and then they lock them in the in the murder rooms. Shouting is not raising your voice, speaking firmly, you simpering poltroon. <laughs> poltroon? I don't know. Uh, shields block force powers, smiley face. Is that true? Hmm? I don't know, see... Because if the, if the force is a matter of moving the things around, as opposed to... You know, like, think of Darth Vader going to choke someone. I don't picture it as he sends forward... A, an invisible hand that finally grabs onto something and then chokes it, and thus a shield would stop it. I see it as he forms around the neck a pressure of the force that closes in on someone. So a shield just, wouldn't matter. It just closes their windpipe. Just, yeah. just a little press. I don't see why... That's all you really need. And so, I, go, I guess that's about the idea of couldn't they just force push the droidicas or lift them and stuff. It's like, honestly, I don't know. I don't know why not. Yeah, I do not know. And if we're told that it just means shields don't work, uh, shields prevent the force, we'd be like, damn. Hmm. Them, uh, them Gungans. <laughs> they should use the, the get everyone with those shields. They're gonna kill the Jedi. Lib pointing out flaws in PM means he's a Disnoy. I think, I think that joke, I'm, I'm sure of it. I a hope so. Sar sar slash him. Uh, what's with all the irrational pre prequel love in the chat? Where have you been? <laughs> like, the prequel love yeah. in the chat is not uncommon. The prequels are answered from the multimedia project that filled in the gaps at the same time they were running, before Clone Wars retconned them. Hmm. Howdy Anomaly, great to finally see you on. Hi Ragu, the Star Wars prequels are objectively better written than the sequels. Toss my Caesar salad sitch. I agree, they're better written. They, Jedi... they meet that high, high standard. Jedi can't use force powers against droidicas. They then use force powers to super run away from them. Yes, this is perfectly fine. I, mean, I still think the super run is silly. But, uh, I could, yeah, the super run was. Oof, why like, is this? We could probably get why over it if there was if we had no other situations where it would have been useful. But I feel like the that's a constant thing that you know hangs over you whenever you're writing Jedi. Yeah, and they do they do basically they do so little with it. It's only used for just a second, but it creates so many problems. That's the thing. It's not about the amount of time it's done or how tiny the detail is. It's the implications. How bad is The Last of Us since it explains... Oh, wait, sorry. How bad is The Lord of the Rings since it explains so little? Does it explain so little? It explains enough. I I'd be curious what part you believe is yeah, lacking, I suppose. Yeah, give us a... you'd have to give us an example here. Hi, Mola. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hello. Y'all looking fabulous today. That's all. Thank you. Good day. Future me in chat. Yes, have a good day. Hmm. Um... Can't any movie fail by the but why not this argument? Well, it depends. If we can point out how someone would have to be acting irrationally or stupid, like it probably is valid. But if you say, for example, you had a very stupid character and you're like, why didn't they do this? Like Homer Simpson. It's like, it wouldn't be a fair argument to say, like, Homer should be smart enough to do the smartest thing. But when you have, like, General Hux or Admiral Holdo doing incredibly stupid things, it makes you wonder. Um, Obi-Wan says, Master Destroyers, and Qui-Gon stops cutting the blast door, Glib. That is true. That happened. Joker doesn't explain his meds or his condition. Lord of the Rings doesn't explain what the ring does or how magic works. Does it not explain what the ring does? I feel like we do get lines about like its influence and its desire to return to Sauron. Yeah, into it he poured all of his cruelty and his malice and his mm. will to dominate all life, and 
they're hunting the ring down and they can clearly sense it and they establish that. The ring race, that is. These all are nitpicks. When did chat become a bunch of TLJ defenders? Next you're going to be telling me Homecoming was bad because they changed MJ or that Atla doesn't have any major flaws. Oh, wait. <gasps> now that's a spicy hmm. super chat right there. Ooh, boy. Should have added that Spaceballs is boring and the Night Before Christmas is boring. Hmm. How much is too little or too much information? That is to be debated a lot of the time. It's very hard to give a definitive... Um, answer on that one. The usual answer is just enough to understand the events as they proceed. Yeah, it'll change from person to person. I don't think there's a a truly objective amount on that. I'm not sure. But I think it's easy enough in a lot of instances to tell, like, we need more information here, or we don't need it here, or we have too much in this other place. Or because they give us so much information that has basically no use, the result is we don't have a lot of very basic stuff because there's no screen time left. Uh, chat is being fucking stupid. I like the prequels, but I actually think the two arguing in favor of them are doing a poor job. Bum, bum, bum. This is what I mean. Uh, chat bah, 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 bah. And, um, and super chats. It's all very split. Lots of, lots of feelings. Going on all over the place. Daddy Glib and Sitch, take my money. From a simp. From your simp. All chats are paid for with my mom's credit card. Eh. Oh, well, tell her thank you. Imagine if the droid could scene was 45 minutes long with them trying everything they could think of, like it just keeps going. Why? So that we know for sure that what they, so that we know for sure in excruciating detail that they can't fight them head on, uh, head on. Mm. I was about to say head on head, but I was like, <laughs> force powers are inconsistent. Imagine my shock. I mean, we want to try to avoid it, right? Yeah, we, do best wanna, we, can. Yeah, we do want to avoid that, absolutely. Mahler? Uh, so it turns out... What? I'm trying to get context for this. What? Someone said... Would people be mad if they drew porn of Jenny Nicholson and a bunch of people are saying do it? Apparently this isn't something to do with one of my tweets and Cosmonaut is like be ashamed that this is your fan base? Someone's asking I don't if... know. I don't, have, I don't fucking know. Like, I... <laughs> when did we ever I, but... say we should draw, you should draw porn of Jenny Nichols? I don't know. This is, I was going to say, like, what, the, what the hell does this have to do with anything we've said? Uh... Assuming this is, uh, uh, the only reason I've been alerted to it is because people in the replies are like, uh, Marx is too nice to flame them, um, I have no qualms about it, but this is Mauler's reply is shame because I actually enjoy some of his criticism. Like, what the hell does this have to do with me? What did we do? Someone wants to draw porn of Jenny Nicholson? <laughs> like, I'm just like, okay. Like, okay, just. Take the compliment, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> what do you want? I don't I'm so know. confused. Okay, I guess. Whatever. Yeah, I don't sure. even know if there's anything to respond to there. I'm just like, uh... <laughs> I don't think we ever made a position clear if we were pro or anti Jebby N Jeb Nichols porn. I mean, I don't think we've had a position on drawing porn of anybody we've covered, really. Yeah, you guys I didn't really think about it. You guys want to draw porn of Mom Movie Bob. <laughs> like if, oh, yeah. Of course, from that, obviously. If you want to go, go ahead and jump on that. I mean, I don't care. I, I, don't, I just don't care. Because it's just funny, though, because you'd be like, I'd be ashamed of my audience if this is going on. I'd be like, well, I am ashamed of several people in several audiences. <laughs> it's like, damn yeah, you, humanity, you suck. But yeah, I was going to say, I don't know. It's, uh, 
I wouldn't say that this is something that comes from it, but I don't even know if it is. I don't know. He's he's blocked out all of the information that I could find out who's it is, which is you know, good on him, I guess. Sweet. Yeah, but um. All right. Seriously though, uh, don't draw porn a movie, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. I'd be curious what he has to say about it though. I'm sure he'd be feeling I'm complimented. Sure he would just love it. He's like, no one's ever drawn porn on me before. Normally it's the opposite. Normally people recoil at the thought. Implying Hunter x Hunter is good, Keck. Well, I haven't seen it, so. I don't know anything about it. Weebs rule this chat now. Welcome to hell, Rags. No. Oh. I don't accept it. Ban the weebs. Make them go away. Return them to their dirty, dark holes. Oh, uh, someone's found it. It's tweet where I've, uh, so Gary Nicholson said people, a lot of angry video essayists don't even know what MacGuffin means. And I quote tweeted her and said, yeah, they don't even get it right. It's MacMuffin. Um, I thought that was just a bit of fun. And, you know, someone responded to that saying, would people get mad if I drew Jenny Nichols and porn? Which, I don't know what the hell that what? has to do with my tweet. <laughs> what? Like, okay. I don't know. I guess they would. They probably would. It's just funny to me because, like, the... The, the association is like, well, this is happening in your audience. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm not, I don't explicitly regularly ban people for talking about what porn they'd like to draw. I don't know, that's just not, never been something that I've been... Yeah, it doesn't normally come up in casual conversation. <sighs> but yeah, um, naughty, naughty audience saying things that can get snipped out and then attached to me. That's, that's how that works. Well, obviously, this is your fault for doing whatever it is that you did. Well, of course, if I hadn't replied to her, no one would have suggested to draw porn of her. <laughs> That's obviously, just... this is your fault for saying McMuffin. That's the code word. That's the M word. The dog whistle. Yeah. Well, why don't they just force push all draw? It's easy, because using the force leaves you open to blast a fire. Stance shows hand first, not lightsaber. I mean, they... I don't think there's anything about that technique though that says you can't push with your lightsaber hand, or you can't push with a hand while keeping your lightsaber up. Yeah, sure. And and couldn't couldn't Qui Gon stop lasers in midair like like Kylo, or is that? I don't know. Or is Kylo <laughs> so incredibly strong? Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> um, I used to like cinema wins. Oh. That one came out of nowhere. Uh, but pro prequel guys aren't arguing like that. You're criticizing the fight choreography? You saw the fights in the OT, right? Emotional impact aside, they were terrible. I mean, some of them were pretty awkward. Yeah, but we're not going to be inconsistent on this. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess that according to Sitch, the OT is trash now. Oh, because of the choreography thing. Uh, Star Wars with game mechanics. We isekai trash now. God. That sounds like one of them there weeby words to me. Gats and my response to Rags' Atla take was somewhat justified because he had terrible references. The anti-prequels are making decent arguments. Oh, yeah. All those references I used for yeah, my was... offhand comments. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. In, in the debate that we never had. <laughs> and chat yeah. is somehow acting worse. The, the, uh, well, it's just... People will rapidly defend a thing that they think is being besmirched, regardless. Just, uh, I think I think that there's clear lines that can be crossed. It's just like, chill the fuck out. Yeah, chill the fuck out. Not that this doesn't apply to the people in the conversation, too. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, Sitch, your anime point was awful. Maul stops to tell Jokiba Enojo how his Force Stand abilities work mid-fight. That's how those animes achieve. Duh. I don't know anything about anything about any of that. I have no idea what's going on there. Glib's bringing the fire. Go, Sitch. Go, Glib. How cute. Glib thinks he's being rational. Glib, stop being passive-aggressive for five seconds. 
Can chat stop being actually aggressive for five seconds? Uh, <laughs> this oh. is going great, isn't it? <laughs> Hooray! Uh, why didn't they leave Jar Jar with the Gungans? Why didn't they? Were they... Like at the beginning? I mean, because they needed, they said they needed a navigator to go through the planet core. Yeah, and it looked as if Qui-Gon was like, Qui -Gon, eh, I can save a life too, why a, not? Yeah, he owes me a life debt. And then he force convinces Boss Nass to let Jar Jar go with him. Uh, the base suggestion. The base Chad Rick versus the Disney, the Virgin Disnoid Glib. Glib does not like the sequel. Glib is not a, stop using that word. <laughs> We are not, nobody in that was a Disnoid. We all hated the sequels. I had to say multiple times during that, that we hate the sequels. Like all of us do. Subtextual, philosophical, metatextual, methemes. The juxtaposition of the plot, truly metatextual. I'm not even 100% sure of who said what, what those responses are now. We're, we're fully into it now. All these could be about yeah, anything. Boy. The concept of powers that are established to require focus not being used constantly while defending one's self-form suppressing fire or another Jedi is not comparable to never deciding to weaponize technology. Hmm. Again, not 100% sure of who that's responding to. Kids love Jar Jar. This is a valid argument, yes. <laughs> okay, if someone was to say people hate Jar Jar or that kids love Jar Jar are both irrelevant, really. Yeah, first off, kids aren't people. Yes. Second off, I don't care what kids like. Kids like all kinds of stupid shit. Jar Jar was insufferable. He was extremely annoying. Someone's actually got it. So someone said... This has nothing to do with Mola about that tweet, and the response is, there it is, replies, laugh my ass off. Okay. Okay, <laughs> the replies but what does it have to do? Talking about what McMuffins, what the hell? All I have to do is is send a bunch of people to say, I'm not even going to say it, because, like, God, it'll come out really badly. It's the same point as the Patrick Williams thing. All you have to do is just get someone to post a thing in someone's reply, and then, oh, look, you're now as bad as that person that you were just condemning. Good job. The association thing is insane. You gotta chill on that. Uh, yeah. Believe me, you shall be hoisted by your own petard. You one of them there, petards? God damn. The reason Jar Jar and the comedic stuff is in the movie is because it's needed. Even Berserk, one of the darkest stories around, had comedic and light moments to lift the mood. It's not needed. Never refer to it as needed. I definitely not, yeah, would not say that it is needed. Do not you dare attempt to convince me of that. Um, I thought Qui-Gon was supposed to be an unconventional Jedi, which contrasted with Obi-Wan being more traditional-minded. Yeah, I think that was pretty I'd, obvious. Yeah, I'd say that's... Yeah, that's kind of the... Yeah, that's pretty clear. I, I definitely agree with that. Obi-Wan certainly was much more, I guess, yeah, traditional is a good way to say it. Level-headed, stoic. In a way. He's not irrational. Why is C-3PO in any scene that's not talking to the Ewoks in the entire series? Why was he even on that mission? The Ewoks? So, I've never minded C-3PO coming on any missions because an interpreter could be useful at any point, really. Especially if you're dealing with Absolutely. aliens. Absolutely. And the idea that it's like, well, what if he gets in the way? I'd be like, I don't think he will. <laughs> he's just, he's sort of there. He, he should be fine. And even if he does, he's and like, you can turn him he's off. a protocol droid, yeah. Which they do. That's pretty funny. He gets ripped to pieces in <laughs> one of the movies. <laughs> they just put it back together, his head on backwards and everything. Uh, why did they just force a run into the city? Because that would be tiring. Force run into the city, across <laughs> the desert. <laughs> like bullets, <laughs> just kicking up a trail of dust wherever they go. Okay, let me clear it up. Prequels are bad. There are many silly bad moments and characters in the prequels, but they tell a full story that has a clear progression. The sequel story have so many holes in it, it gave me triphobia. 
Uh, yeah, there's a lot of holes. Uh, huge coincidence that R2 and 3PO find Obi-Wan after landing in the middle of Tatooine and not being shot down. Is that also convenient bad writing too? Yes. I think it's extremely coincidental that that happens. And if someone told me it was the will of the Force, I'd be like, oh. Once again, huh? The best you can argue is that they were... Their, their um, escape pod was set to land in the general area that they knew that Obi-Wan lived. And uh, it's just lucky that they are sold to people who have a direct connection with Obi-Wan. That's pretty fucking coincidental. Mm, very, uh... Yeah. <clears throat> just if, if Owen Lars didn't need any droids that day, what would have happened? Having, mm. having come into this two hours late, I realized why the Romans set up their trial system the way they did, and why the Anglo-Saxons determined a jury was the best means to settle a legal argument. Trial by combat was clearly the best way. All the prequels yeah, well so written. Trial by combat. Ass, man. Trial by combat. I'm glad the movies explained the will of the Force. I'm, I don't even want to go into the will of the Force. <laughs> I just, oh, yeah. um, it's a rabbit hole. A genuine question. Why do you guys still have the debates? They all end up being so tism me, my teeth rot. <laughs> <laughs> so the well, whole point is to have two people of opposing views discuss the topic. Or more, you know, more than two. But, uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of people request a bit. This one was heavily requested. Um, a well-written, chosen one narrative should never rely on plot contrivance. Events within the universe should still make sense. I agree. Pretty much, yeah. I'm pretty much on that. The Sith are the imbalance because they seek absolute power over the Force. I'm tapping out. Sitch killed me before Movie Bob. Hmm. If the Jedi thought the Sith were all dead in the prequels, then why do they need a prophecy that says a Chosen One will kill all the Sith? Is it true the could, Sith have returned? Could there not be an imbalance in the Force? Through things other than Sith, though? Because no. the Sith are not the only dark side you I assume. I mean, I don't know. It's, Im it's implied that there's only two. So I don't, I don't know. It's, it's strange. Well, I mean, it's, I guess it's not strange. It's just sort of implied that there's the light side and the dark side. And Quinn is like, uh, quite Quinn. Qui-Gon <laughs> Jinn is like this odd man out but the dynamics of sith and jedi are never really explored in any meaningful detail yeah we have to go off a lot of implication um mola what is your favorite ahoy series mine is iconic arms i love iconic Ar well i love everything he does but uh my favorite video is the quake review and if you consider it a series where he goes from uh, wolfenstein to quake to no, wolfenstein to doom to quake the Half Life. I like that set of four videos. We talked about how insanely influential all four of those were. This is a cake, and this is a annoyed face. <laughs> if the Force wills it, that the sequels are justified. Uh, any contrivance in the sequels are justified by that logic. Uh, strict light and dark sides are the perversion. A balance is force sensitive people not practicing either or. Kick glib. Also, high regs. Hello. I can't catch this one live, but I finally super chat and there's so much to say, so I'll just say this. They turn John <laughs> Connor into a Terminator. Yep. Yes, they Genesis, did. Genesis really just doesn't like John Connor. That, that happened. Like themes, chosen one stories, and prophecies should never be a crutch. They are supported by the execution, not the other way around. Pretty much. The idea of going like, it's okay though because it fits a theme, or it's okay though because... I mean, I say that as if TLJ does that. TLJ says it fits a theme when it doesn't even. Because, um... 
you could have like a particular event take place and it's like this is really good for character or for plot or for world build or for theme um but it could also be bad for any of those four and i think arguments can be made about that but when it literally fails at all four it's just a contradiction it's just like you just fucked up uh, this EFAP is the Last of Us Part 2 of Dark Souls games. That seems fair, isn't it? This is the Gedelb of EFAP. Oh. oh my goodness gracious. Say it ain't so. We are brave means bring Jar Jar. We are brave? I think... Doesn't... Who says that? It's, uh... Padme, right? Because we are brave. Uh, I mean, Jar Jar says, like, we said, brave warriors. That sort of thing. Oh, I, I meant in the in the council, in the chambers or whatever, when talking about what the plan is. Because we are brave, your highness. I think oh, Sitch, yeah. was, Sitch was bringing it up as, like, a weird piece of dialogue. I love how I get called into work to go cut down a dead tree and you massives are only 30 minutes further than into the movies. Love you, long man. Invite Jay and then kick him and high rags. Hello. Yes, he was pre-kicked. Um, I'm high hey. playing episode one racer and it's insane. Good. I hope it's fun. Good luck. Enjoy it, man. Uh, didn't they do the same thing with getting to Bespin in episode five when the Falcon's hyperdrive was down? Oh, I, th I can't remember if they say, like, we don't have enough fuel to go anywhere, but, you know, closer systems, they might have done. If slash when a new EFAP gaming comes out, might I suggest Death Road to Canada? Rags has some experience with it, if I remember right, and it could be a co-op with a Parsec or some other online service. Uh, yeah, I do have some experience with Death Road to Canada. It's a fun game, and, um, yeah. Absolutely, would not mind at all playing that sometime. Have you seen the trailer for Abigail? It looks bad. Batwoman bad. Abigail? No, I I don't know about that. Young girl lives in a city whose borders have been closed for many years due to disease epidemic. While searching for her father, she learns she has magical powers. <gasps> wow. That sounds wonderful. I hope that she wins the battle in her whatever thing. Starring Tinatin Della Kijvili, Eddie Marson, Rino Makamatov, Roshada Kurkorova, Gleb. There's a guy called Gleb. Oh. Gleb? <laughs> yeah, I mean, hope, hopefully it's good. Uh, hey, Mola, what's your credit card information? I need it for a meme. Oh. Three. We gotta do it to save Ninja on the battle bus. He Three. needs our credit card information. To save the day. How long would it take to sell the ship? Not like there's a CarMax out there. Uh, they're in a hurry and maybe couldn't wait for days slash weeks to get a buyer? I, you don't need... You just need enough. She'd get a new ship later. They don't have to get the best deal. And I think that... It, whether or not we can generate reasons for it to not be a possibility, they should be in there. Like if, you know, you have them discuss this, it's like, Sir, couldn't we sell the ship to get one that's, you know, blah blah blah, and then Qui-Gon's like, mm, it would take too long, we need to get out of here within the next few days, because the Trade Federation are going to catch up, that sort of thing. But even then I'd be like, how could it take too long? Things, to, especially in a place like Tatooine. Probably they'd be like, cash in hand, let's go. Gimmer, gimmer. Hi, what if Anakin hyperspace rammed the blockade? <laughs> well, perhaps it would be destroyed. <laughs> I'll try hyperspace ramming. That's a neat trick. <sighs> it would have worked. You wouldn't have survived, though, and that would make the whole prophecy thing awkward. Uh, didn't Qui-Gon barter for the quote, the boy, the boy and his mother, and then Watto, through a dice roll, forces Qui-Gon to choose either Anakin or Shmi? Well, there's no choice there. He basically just says, blue the boy, red the mother. Yeah, the problem with the dice roll is that Watto knows he's a Jedi, and yet he rolls dice oh, knowing that... Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm wrong. Qui -Gon Technically, Qui-Gon does choose, choose because he, he, yeah, uses the force. Influences um, the, yeah. Who's better? One for Watto, two for Rey. 
Watto? Watto's like a Watto. character. Yeah. I wanted to ask if you've seen Promare. It's an anime movie with great fights, voice work, and animation. Only problem is the plot is abysmal. I would love to see you oh, guys tear it up. Anime. Oh. But it's called Promare. And that <gasps> sound almost sounds like an editing software. Pro Pro Mare. <laughs> uh yeah, I would love to see you guys tear it up. Also, hi rags, pets. Hello. Exchanging currency would probably get the attention of the huts, and no guarantee Anakin wouldn't die in another pod race in the week he was gone. Exchanging currency would probably get the attention of the huts. Why? Why would they care? Why would the huts care? Just everything's running as normal. Surely there's exchanges constantly. I refuse to believe that there's no exchange anything, for credits on this place. A, the huts would probably see it as a huge advantage if they had the queen of a planet owing them favors. If you had, like, a character who moves around the galaxy semi-regularly, someone like Mando, for example, um, or whoever else, just someone who operates in a completely legal way, and they visit Mos Eisley, and they know that people come to Mos Eisley and they can't do anything with credits there because they're completely useless, wouldn't you be like, ooh, if I offer a really harsh exchange rate, I could probably make quite a profit here. Like, this is why I don't really believe that. Like, surely somebody would want to set that up. Be like, yeah, I'll, I'll trade for credits, sure. And then I can trade the credits back to people who need credits because they're heading to the Republic. Absolutely. This, this is how we do it in real life. <laughs> There's people who trade money. Again, Yo, yeah. really, really weird that they apparently don't have Republic. It's it's uh, it's it's a it's superatism. Fuck Mary, kill Rich Evans, the Dawn, and Tonald. Prequel suck. Um, marry the Dawn. Probably fuck Tonald and kill Rich Evans. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe marry Rich Evans, that could be funny. Yeah, it would be funny. Yeah. Uh, there's a dichotomy between the belief in the Jedi way and a spiritual belief in the Force, hence Qui-Gon isn't on the Jedi Council, he goes with the flow of the Force. Yeah, I can believe that he's more interested in running how he thinks run with the with the light side of the Force. I agree, yes. Well, slap me with a jab and call me Count Dooku because I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> yeah. Don't equate American slavery as all slavery. Oh, that's the point of the conversation we're in. Are they talking about the slave portion of whether or not it's believable, I guess? Uh, I think Anomaly Inc. actually said he agreed that he wanted more sort of strife in Anakin's day-to-day. -day. Yes, more evidence that it was a harsh slavery life yeah he agreed interesting but uh, yeah i know a lot of people felt differently on that one sure uh, hulk was a slave in thor ragnarok not all slaves are mistreated he was absolutely mistreated <laughs> until he wasn't yeah the uh the thing with hulk though is that he was happy with it like, I'm a fighter that gets glory and prestige, and I also get a nice room. Um, I agree that there are many different types of slavery. I think the one that on Tatooine, it was very much hard to distinguish the difference between that and uh, something that might not even be considered slavery in certain parts of the world or operation. So, I'm not even sure how I feel on it entirely yet. Serfdom. I'll have you know my serfs have returned home because of the quarantine. You're all the virus. The earth is healing. <laughs> Noms and Mull are streaming together in EFAP Dream. The only two YouTubers I'm members of. Rhino Milk for All. Hi, chat. There you go, chat. Someone said hello to you. Uh, being a slave isn't the part that breaks you. Understanding what it means to be a slave and what you do... Sorry. And what you lost do. Similar with other traumatizing situations. Anakin, the Chosen One, prophecy speaks of fear of to bring balance to the debate. Oh, I get it. Anakin. 
While Anna is the be is a welcome addition, Rags is still the best woman. Well, yeah, yeah. yet far from me to churlishly refuse such a, you know, such such a kind uh, compliment. I'd be a better actress than Shmi. Shmi. Right. And right. is the big gay. True. Molly should check out Prepare to Die, Prepare to Try, and RKG YouTube channels. Three lads playing Souls games, among other things, for the first time. The Welshman is hilarious and reminds me of you. Yeah. Huh. Wow, that's racist. All, all Welshmen? Oh, that is kind wow. of fucked up. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Unpopular opinion. Spinning was a pretty good trick. No, I agree. I mean, it spinning is a pretty is neat trick. trick. Yeah, good trick. That's you know, like the default go-to neat trick is spinning. The word is out. You're doing wrong. I'm gonna lock you up. Your lion eye is gonna tell you right, so listen up. Don't make a fight. Your talk is cheap. You're not a man. You're throwing stones. I don't even know what that reference is. I don't know what that is either. I'm what did stone rhyme with? Song? What? What, what, was, what? what did stones rhyme with? You got fight, cheap, man, stones. Or, oh. Or if the, yeah, I don't know if it was meant to rhyme. It's one of those free verse... Poetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As uh, everyone, everyone here needs to watch YouTube poop: The Rise of Ray Palpatine by Drew Belmore. It has some of the funniest edits I've seen. A silver lining of Tross. A lot of funny stuff has come out of Tross. It is a dumb one. Ah, uh, yeah, it's just it's it's funny bait. Um, but they say the sky's the limit, and to me that's really true. But my friend, you have seen nothing. Just wait till I get through, because I'm bad. I'm bad, shim. Ah, now I know what it is. I see. You don't definitely need your protagonist to be overwhelmed by your antagonist at the beginning of the film. You can show your pros at the height of their ability, have them fall later, which is what the prequels do. Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree with that, actually. Yeah. Not Jedi, are idea? Jedi are superior to less than 1% of the droids. Is that what the battle droids occupy? I gotta... Unless you mean they're only superior to small amounts of them. Yeah, but I thought that was, yeah. I mean, that's pretty, yeah. I agree. I, I doubt that people would disagree with that. Um... Then again, hmm. Maul is close to Sabretooth from the first X-Men, fighting Jedi versus fighting Logan. Get Padme versus capture Rogue, etc., etc. You don't need dialogue to... Mostly follow that. Stitch sounds yeah. like a second-rate Mauler. He doesn't seem to grasp objective. Wow. Wow. That's, that, Sitch, Sitch is his own uh, dude. He, he does like to use an appeal to emotion... Um, for an argument, which isn't useless, like, if the majority of your audience really did feel a particular thing, you can try and be like, trying to account with them for that and be like, this is this is doing this, so clearly it's a problem. Like, that would be a style of argumentation. It's just, um, I just, I avoid it myself, because it, all it takes is one person to be like, well, it didn't do that for me. You're like, stuck. You're like, oh, yeah, well, what do you well. do from there? Try to convince them on the spot? Yeah. And you, you end up in that position of, come on, come on, come on. And you're like, what do you mean, come on? <laughs> you gotta do better than that. Basically, Sitch, you can't tell it, you have to show it. Anna, they do, you see it in Mole's actions. Sitch, you can't show it, you have to tell it. My brain, ouch. I think Anna has joined the stream at this point. Uh, oh my some, goodness. Something can be true and not explicitly stated. Oh, you mean like... Like gravity existing? Nobody has to say it, but it's true? Uh, he attacks the Jedi because he hates them. He says he hates them in the movie. Where is this contradiction? Could have been better. Doesn't mean the movie is bad. What about Anna's description of Maul wasn't apparent in the movie? He wants to kill Jedi. Oh, I remember this part of it. I remember. An objectively bad movie loses more money than it makes. Oof. 
That's just not fair at all. <laughs> what about a movie that never got it's released? Fair. An objectively bad movie that loses money can still be subjectively good to an individual. If you want to go entirely by whether or not it makes profit, go for it. I mean, Anthropoid lost money. That's what I mean. I refuse to accept that just because it doesn't make enough money means it's not. Yeah, that's ridiculous. This EFAP is the least EFAPy an EFAP has ever EFAPed. No hate, just too little molar and rags to climax. You know. Well, now we know what the people really want. I was gonna say you can't, you can't knock that. They, they need more of us, more molar rags. Palpatine, move against the Jedi first. Yeah, we did eventually get that out there. Uh, the EFAP Facebook page has been challenging the Plinket PT reviews on stream under the objective microscope. They don't hold up very well. Oh my. Maybe not, yeah. Uh, Darth Vader is one-dimensional in A New Hope. I'm trying to think of all right. if I would disagree with that at all. Um, I'd have to, I think it provides him an extra dimension, again. the fact that he's, like, uh, insulted about his religion by his own faction. And he and chokes the guy. Yeah, I feel like that definitely adds more to Darth Vader than just that he's the bad guy. Now, Vader, we have a rule. No choking in the conference room. As you wish. Oh, epic. Um, concede the point, Sitch. You done goofed. Big oofs in the chat. Mola, next time, please have guests who've seen the movie. Oh. Oh, shit. Shots fired. Don't be no Don't let knobs be right about debates again. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> These debates are gay. Oh, we we no. knew it was true. Debates are gay. Uh... Blinket reviews don't hold up objectively. Hi, Rags. Hello. And you very well might be correct. I haven't seen him in so long. The hell is that? This is apex self-aware cringe. Why are you convinced that Palpatine only had one plan and no contingencies? I think they wanted to I'm be not. more explicit. <laughs> uh, what if Padme was Palp's waifu crush and becoming Emperor was part of his master plan to capture Padme's used bathwater? Oh. It all makes sense. By my dark side bathwater. Be careful, only dip a toe now, dear. Only one toe at a time. I'm tempted to report the video for how much Sitch has abused logic tonight. Major Lee seems rational at this point. This has been a total trash fire. That old oh, lady... it wasn't that... <laughs> it was pretty bad. I mean... It, there was there was progress made, okay? Things were discussed. There was good things it in it. It could have been worse. There was good things in it. Uh, that old lady yeah, was like probably. Rag's grandma at Christmas. Mm. <laughs> the bones one, yeah. It's in her bones. The bones are ruined. I can feel it in my bones, Annie. The storm's coming, Annie. Get the fuck inside. She was only in like that movie and one other thing. Then she died two years or three years ago at 96 years old. She's been through a lot of sandstorms in her time. The genius of Papa Palp's uh, plan was how easily it could adapt and change to unforeseen events outside his control. Like I said, uh, most of the ways that the plan could ever go seem to be able to benefit him uh, when you understand his only goal. He is, he is a clever little goober, Mr. Palpatine. There are many ways to get what I want. To kill the I Jedi, to end the Senate, to kill the Galactic Army. Movie. Valorum was about to support her, but was Evil talked down me. by his aides. Evil 2, Electric Boogaloo. I hate it when my aides talk me down. Aids. <laughs> It's the people who propose the investigation that is suspect. Check the scene. Propose the investigation. Do you mean the Malastair people? The Congress of Malastair? Blah, 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 blah. I can't remember. I'd have to check again. The Councillors of Malastair agree with the Trinity. He was gonna oh, but that's dumb. That's bad dialogue or something for reasons. He was going to stay, but then Jar Jar tells her about the Gungan army. Oh, yeah, I think so. It's, it's the knowledge of that army that makes her decide to go. How big is the army? 
are you well equipped? <laughs> he's like this you tab. Have... Like, oh. He's like, no, no, no. You got an army that's fucking good enough, man. Uh, there will never be... Oh, I think he actually does specify, doesn't he? He says a grand army, so, yeah. Um, a grand th army! It's big. There will never be help now, Sitch. The no confidence is trying to fix the system regardless of the outcome of Naboo. There are two concerns. They are two concerns. I suggest we put this EFAP to a vote of no confidence, and I need the support of each and every one of you to influence the Senate. Also, if Glib thinks that the Republic government is bad writing, then he must hate the EU. Perhaps. I hate the EU. Uh, for the next prequel debate... A lot debate, of people hate the EU. Yeah, I was going to say this. Uh, uh. Heard, heard around the, around the, the block. Um, for the next prequel debate, please get Sophistic Autistic. Judging from his chats on the Discord, he'd make a great contribution to the discussion. I uh, I don't know who we would get if we were to do another prequel debate. I, I, oh, I don't know if we'd be allowed to. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel I feel like I feel like we'd be, be, it'd be us. Imagine chat on the opening of that stream. They're just like, no. <laughs> there would be one or two people saying more. 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 He literally almost did say override. Let's go to Naboo, but was talked down seconds before her no confidence vote. This is why he was weak. Yeah, yeah he, he, was. He, he does get talked to by his little peoples, and he's like, Will you allow your blah, 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 blah. I, I don't remember this specifically. Lib, you're being an orphan. Oh, no. It's not that they didn't believe her. They are corrupt. Look at the scene and the people calling for the investigation. I had a good hot day at work, and I'm happy to listen to you all. Whichever way this conversation go, I am happy to watch our DFAP live. Big thanks. Aw. Oh, hey, look. Someone said, six hours and 40 minutes in, my brain hurts. That's how far we're into that stream. Yay! Thanks for the timestamps. <laughs> now we know. Don't die on this hill, Glib. Move on. UN commissions covered up human rights violations. My god. Why would Padme trust the corrupt UN commissions? Um, yeah, that's another issue as well, is that, uh... Doesn't Palpatine say something about that commission being racism as well? I can't remember if that's in the film or not. I remember someone mentioning it. Brain's all melty. Um, we never see anyone poop in the entire series. We must assume everyone constantly is constipated. I think that's fair. Emperor Constantine? That's stupid. Constantine is the flag. I have been constipated for a thousand years. He's more poop than man now. John Constantine. John Constantine. Palpatine, if I may say so, your majesty, the chancellor has very little real power. He is mired down by baseless accusations of corruption. Manufactured scandal surrounds him. The bureaucrats are in charge now. EFAP Smash Bros. game when? Also high rags. That was Hello. something we were thinking of doing, but fortunately the plan as it originally stood, which was the three EFAP people versus the three great uh, British podcast people, that can't really work now. <laughs> so maybe if we rejig it somehow and get a different setup yeah, going. I'm still down for it, absolutely. The Naboo security force is an army, Glib. Move on. Uh, Glib, I want to thank you. Before I thought The Phantom Menace was a good movie, but now I think The Phantom Menace is amazing. Thank you. Wow. The oh clone, boy! Yeah, who's got, got plenty of plenty of snark in the in the super chat. Nothing wrong with that. Um, the Clone Wars TV aren't canon. In episode one alone, they retconned Zing, Zinj, and fifty others, as well as Han and Leia, in one small part of the OT era. Everything that Mola said is in the Clone Wars. I haven't seen the show beyond season. Yeah, I don't know much about it myself. They are ignoring the fact that the Trade Federation blockade was one small group, so the force required is much smaller, so you wouldn't need an entire Republic army. Oh yeah, I, I wouldn't have suggested that that's probably what the Senate would send. I think they would be like, we have to send the, you know, an enormous army to destroy the Trade Federation. I don't even think there'd be a battle. I think they show up in the Trade Federation, who are cowards. Would be like, okay, you know, okay, cowardly. okay. Like, fine, 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 fine. The movie's never said that Coruscant had air that you can't just guess. The movie must tell you, so how do they breathe? Uh -huh, I get it. I get it. 
I see the point that you are making. Clone Army was pan-galactic. Planets had sec forces. The Trade Federation are in the Republic. They had their own military, so do the banking clan and techno you It only makes sense that, yeah, yeah it only it makes, makes sense, sense that independent members have their own independent armies. Yeah. And why we would ever assume they wouldn't. I thought the debate was if the prequels were well, better than the sequels, not over which is better written. Oh, well, um, in terms of writing, even Sitch eventually said that he thinks the prequels are better than the sequels, so that was pretty much conceded. Nobody there thought that the sequels were better written. So it was about how well the prequels were written. Which I think is a more interesting thing to say, because the sequels are so fucking bad that establishing yeah, that you're better than the sequels is not worth much. Glib is the worst EFAP guest. Oh my god, Glib. You gotta prep that redemption arc. Yep. This is Sitch on my other account, having fun so far. Oh, that's from Literature Devil. <laughs> Movie not explaining something and then the next one giving some details isn't a contradiction, it's called elaboration. Right, I don't um... Think what point that was talking about. I'm not 100% sure, but I was just gonna say, like, so if, you know, if a guy, like, randomly shoots lasers out of his face and destroys our hero, and we're like, what the hell, he could do that? And in the second film, they go into depth about how you, this guy can shoot lasers out of his face. I'd be like, yeah, I don't care that you've explained that now. We needed it then. Because the, somebody could just do, it's like, you know, elaborating on, but then, in a different way, if they wanted to explore what the tax problem was specifically that all started in Phantom Menace in Attack of the Clones, in like throwaway pieces here and there, I, I think that's fine. Make us look back on Phantom Menace being like, oh, it's kind of cool that we know exactly what that particular tax problem was now. But we didn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to have it. Uh, Naboo, Gungans, Wookiees, Geonosians, Ut Utopians, uh, Mandalorians, these are all planetary armies in episodes 1, 2, and 3, not just clones and droids. Hi, Rags, Uwu. Hello, Uwu. And we get the Gungans, we get the Wookiees, they get the Trade Federation. Pretty, pretty clear. Lots pretty of armies clear. of different Lots sizes of and effectiveness. Yes, very, very obvious. The Techno Union Army at your disposal count. Uh, the fact that Naboo has a military means it's logical that other planets would also have them. I don't even know that we need to see any armies to know that planets will probably have armies. It would be really weird if they didn't. I think it would be worthy would of considering if they had someone say, it's a pity that no planet in the entire system, the, the entire galaxy has any army. I'd be like, wow. It's a shame that firearms haven't been invented. I'll be honest with you guys, if I was leading any one of the individual systems, I'd be like, we should probably get a military just in case someone tries to fucking invade us. Because apparently that's a thing that happens. Someone on, the, someone on our own planet doesn't invade our individual country. Um, aside from Alderaan, who doesn't have an army in Star Wars? I mean, do we know that Alderaan didn't have an army? I know she says it's a peaceful planet. Does she say it doesn't have a military at all? Yeah. Um, I don't think. I think she says we don't have an army, and they're only referred to as like security forces. I think. Oh, you're, are you thinking of Naboo? I'm talking about uh, the original trilogy now. Oh, Alderaan. What does Leia say about him? I do not know. I can't remember. Go to when they pulled in the script. Oh, you titan. Oh, Alderaan is peaceful. We have no weapons. You can't possibly. Yeah, I seriously doubt that Alderaan have no weapons, but okay. I'm, I'm assuming she's saying that as a form of pleading. I wouldn't actually assume that they have... Surely it's impossible for them to not have weapons. They must have tools, and tools could absolutely be used weapons, right? Like, it would be really weird if they absolutely had nothing that was weaponized. That is odd. Um, yeah, people in chat are saying she's probably lying. I would assume she's just trying to plead that they don't destroy Alderaan. Yeah, it's likely. It's a reasonable thing to say, yeah. Uh, damn it, it's explicitly stated that the Senate is extremely red, taped, and corrupt. Trade Fed is shown to have a power faction in Senate to block action. 
Padme went to the Senate not for military aid, but for them to challenge the invasion on legal economic grounds, because the Trade Federation insists the occupation is... No, they say that the invasion is illegal, unless yeah, they get the treaty the... signed. Exactly. When Sidious tells them to begin the invasion, but my lord, isn't that illegal? And he I says, I will be illegal. <laughs> Motherfucker. Don't speak to me, you fuck. <laughs> fuck you up. Kick your ass. False You're very trick. mean, the lord. And very well, you are mean, but, uh, okay. Just... Get the job done. What do you mean they do nothing? They sent two Jedi. Uh, the the Chancellor sent Yeah, in secret. The Chancellor of Lorem did. Just realized how late it is in the UK. <gasps> Rags, your Twitter handle was your pal Rags. Since your Twitter got nuked, does that statement still stand? Are you still my and everyone's pal? Yes! It is true. For I think, always and eternity. I think Anna was to speak, but has audio issues. Yeah, there were a few. As as is a commonality in the old EFAPs. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Uh, what do you guys think of the film The Fountain? Not seen it. The Fountain? I don't think I've seen it either. I think it's worth giving credit to the prequels for being far more ambitious creatively than the sequels. Yeah, I would rather just focus on how they achieved their goals versus having more interesting goals in general. Because I think they beat out the sequels in that too. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Paul, you seem to enjoy Buffy just a little, so I was wondering if you've read the continuation comics. Also, hi Anna. I avoid the comics um, after I found out there's a, I don't want to spoil anything, but they've made a few decisions that I find horribly bad as uh, what makes the end of both shows very meaningful to me. Uh, the comics undo big portions of those things in order to have the story continue, which is precisely what I despise about a lot of what stories have to continue with. It's like, oh, the story's not over, guys. Keep going, keep going. Uh, uh, this happens now. And it's like, ugh. I'm a big fan of stories ending. You know, not in every case, but in most. In fact, after Stranger Things Matter. Season 1, with the cliffhanger they have, I was like, ooh, more Stranger Things, cool. And uh, Smiler Al, as you know, was watching it with me, and he was like, boo, should have ended. And I was like, oh, I don't know, I think we got potential here to make more story. This is going to be good. He was like, no, boo, it'll be bad. Trust me, it'll be bad, because this season was made with a clear goal, and now they're just dropping in a cliffhanger because they want to make more stuff to make more money. And I was like, Let me watch Season 2, and we hated it. Like, I was right, and I was like, oh. Hooray. <laughs> Mola plays. What? Something was ruined. Oh, no. Well, that's the thing. I, and then I watched season three with someone who was like, please watch it with me. And I was like, fine. And I was laughing through most of it. So awful. <sighs> Mola plays the movie YouTube Algorithm Awakens. And ironically, yeah, I get spooked whenever yeah, I play a movie. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Again, the time on that one EFAP where it was. Like the message came up where it was just like, they're breaching some kind of rule. I was like, oh shit. Don't kill us, we just yeah, want to I'm talk about a them. movie. <laughs> I'm not trying yeah. to make them watch the movie. It was, wasn't it, it almost happened with the stupid Mission Impossible Fallout shit when I was trying to show, all I wanted to do was be like, look, there's the face-making machine, okay? <laughs> That's Very where simple. it is. Just one little thing from a movie. I was like, are you trying to play our movie and profit from it and substitute for it? I'm like, no, 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 no. If anything, we're promoting oh, your movie. Please stop. <laughs> we're trying to help. Chill. We come in peace. Uh, if I'm being honest, I think Jar Jar is fine. Oh. Don't. <laughs> I wish you were lying. I think he's shit. I find Jar Jar to be... Quite fucking annoying, but uh, it, you know, I think if I were told, can I, can I redo Phantom Menace, but also keep him in the way that he is, and ha at least have him, you know, take him down by like half of his percent in the movie, I'd be like, all right, let's really work on this. Can we make it so that, you know, he's smoother and he's not as just a lot of weird shit that he says. A lot of, a lot of times we just like, why are you here? Why are we focusing on you? I guess yeah. all you can really say is, well, we're kind of hoping that it, you know, eases off the harder parts of the film or the tone and that kids have a funny rabbit to look at. 
alien rabbit. Uh -huh. Oh, it stepped in the doo doo. <laughs> All right, Jar Jar. You, oh, Jar Jar. You stepped, stepped in, in the doo. That poopy. Thoughts on the Naughty Dog situation? From the little I know, it's awful. Yeah. Awful, awful, awful. I wish I'd say more. Uh, just the, looks like they've taken The Last of Us Two in a horrible direction, of which I will find out on. And the way that they're trying to knock down people, trying to talk about it, is just classic doo doo. The step in the doo doo. Didn't didn't right, listen to Jar Jar. Right in that doo doo. Jar Jar reminded me of the silliness of Yoda when we first encounter him, especially the interaction between R two D two. I guess that's why I gravitated toward him because he brought me back to a simpler time. Yeah, but remember how Yoda's was an act, and it was supposed to be an act? And I don't know, I found Yoda funny. And Yoda was actually funny. You saw these, he's, he's French. I love these such, especially on rewatches, because you know he's trolling. God, you legend. Eating his, uh, his sausage. That fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you cheeky little... Jar Jar reminded me of the si Oh, so yeah. Oh, ooh, this is... So this says, Revenge of the Sith... Greater than Attack of the Clones, greater than Phantom Menace, greater than Empire, greater than A New Hope, greater than Return of the Jedi. Please don't raw me. I don't know, man. Raw me. But we'll call raw if he's available, then it's happening. Um, A New Hope, then Empire, then Re uh, Revenge of the Sith, then Return of the Jedi, then Phantom Menace, then Attack of the Clones. I think people are just sharing their... Six four five two one three. Everyone, everyone sort of mm -hmm. orders them. Down. Um, anyone who's lived in a desert for a long term time can understand Anakin's "I hate sand" line. You loathe it. It does make sense. Grow up with sand. Uh, yeah, I no, I I believe him. I never once thought he was being uh being dishonest there. I believe him that he hates sand. I feel like after listening to him, I hate sand a little more myself. You know, I think it's coarse. Rough. It gets everywhere. Yeah, like it's easy. It makes some everywhere. good points. Grainy and gritty. Not a fan. The time of my childhood. Oh wait. Yeah, the time of my childhood. So Jar Jar is as much Star Wars to me as R two D two. I got chastised for liking Episode One, and that's why I can laugh now. Can we all agree the design of the Lucha hulks and landing ships are literal perfection, even though we don't know if they can fit a woman? The Lutra hulks and landing ships. What are what am I? What are they? Are these referring to? Lutra hulks. Oh, the donut ships. Oh, the donut ships. They're called Lucra hulks. I guess. That's cool. Lucra hulks. I like that. And the landing ship. Yeah, I mean, I like the donut ship. It looks cool. Whose tech is more gay, the Gungans or the Wakandans? Probably the Wakandans. Yeah. Yeah. They have no excuse. The Gungans are like underwater frog people, while the Wakandans are the hyper advanced, best materials ever, and fucking have spears. Laser spears that blast people, I guess, but still spears. Uh, have you guys heard of Chris Chan, A Complete Comprehensive History? It's a series of excellent YouTube videos by Gino Sam... No. We've had a couple no, of references to... No, I don't know about the videos. I know about the person, character, yeah. the person. I don't know about the internet videos, though. We've had a few uh, people referencing Chris Chan recently. What's the things going on oh there? Oh my. Um, it's worth a listen, and it's quite the long, man, and it's 30 seconds in each part. It's... 40 to 50 minutes, put it on while you're editing or something. Can do. Seven hours after my ship's shift starts and we're still going. Yay, a EFAP. <laughs> okay, list the top 10 best looking EFAP men. Go. EFAP men? Um. EFAP men? Best looking e Like Like the people we've covered or Is it like EFAPers? Is it the cast, the people we've covered, and the memes as well? Because, like, the Don, you know. Yeah, obviously he's on the top. Um, Go throw or, in Tonal. I guess that we've had. Tonal looks good. Yeah. Tonal's a handsome guy. We have, we had, we've had, we plenty of handsome people. Hey, 
Maybe if the Gungans and the Nabu guards could have had a full assault on Thede, we give the Gungans guns. Gungans? Like, so we just have them hold up in Thede with the droids and then we do a full assault and sneak a little team in to get to the Moidians. This is a distraction thing. I don't know, I think their plan works out well enough. And uh, the only question is just like, wow, the Moidians were so desperate to crush them out in the field that they sent their guys out there. Then again, could you make the argument that Palpatine convinced them to send his Tisms out there because Palpatine was secretly hoping that, hey, if they win or lose, I'll have a way in to uh, get my seat. Uh, sweet, you're still alive. Yay. Hi, Noms. Rags, you better back my boy up or I'ma shave you. Uh, back your boy up? Is he talking about Anomaly, I think? I think so. I mean, sometimes. It depends on what he says. If he's right, I'll back him up. If he's wrong, I won't. Thank you, Mauler. I said back in 2015 that The Force Awakens would cause problems for the rest of the trilogy. Well, yeah, I, I, I always feel like I have to be like, don't understate the badness of TFA. A lot of people are still like, hey, TFA's pretty cool, though. It's like... The naughty little boy. My favorite live stream is Mauler and Anomaly at the same time? What is this, a crossover episode? Yes. Sort of. Revenge of the Sith I is a masterpiece. Done. Fight me. Revenge of the Sith is a masterpiece? I wouldn't, uh... I'd say it's not even average. Not enter into the realm of masterpiece. Uh, prequels yeah. have the best memes. Even the Chinese bootleg have some great memes. Prequels suck at memes. This is true. I absolutely agree. They have fantastic memes. The and meme the, quality is extreme the, meme quality. The toppest of memes that ever came out of all three sequel films is probably the sacred text. That, and I don't even know. Yeah. I think that just that was just because it's so absurd. A sacred yeah. Jedi text. Generation Tech made a joke that Padme falling into Geonosis in Attack of the Clones caused a small clot to form in her head, and it grew, and the stress of pregnancy killed her. Obviously, it would have been cooler. It's kind of hard to translate that to an audience without it coming across as lame. Like, if they went, I'm afraid an aneurysm has burst. Thing. They oh. don't, do they even say, like, she died mysteriously or something like that? Don't they? Yeah, I thought they said, like, we can't explain it or whatever. We can't explain it. It's like, okay, I guess. Reasons we don't understand, right. she is dying. Or, 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 or the Obi Wan is like, she's dying. Big sad. Big sad indeed. And I feel like the droids would be able to pick up anything that was actually medically wrong. Yeah, it's some forcedism. It's the force, the will of the force. Um, at about 136 in episode 1, they discuss how the Trade Federation has complete control of Naboo, so no need to blockade a locked down planet, right? I don't see why they would move any of their ships out when this is their entire thing they need to sort out today. Yeah, this doesn't <laughs> like, matter important. We've got a, we've just really taken over the planet. Important. We haven't yet got the treaty signed, and who knows what's going on in the Senate. Let's keep our ships. And if someone was like, no, let's move them all away except one, I'd be like, why? Why? Like, <laughs> Carl, why? Explain <laughs> to me your reasoning for the suggestion. Seeing how so pro. When they come back, they can explain. Seeing how pro prequel chat is is so depressing. May Rich Evans forgive them for their stupidity. Also, fuck Mary Kill, Ray, Captain Marvel, Kelly Marie Tran. I'm not uh, Mary. I, I would no marry Captain Karen. Marvel. I'll marry Kelly. Uh, fuck the other two. I wouldn't want to live with either. <laughs> it's not happening. Fuck, fuck Ray. No, fuck Kelly Marie Tran, Mary Ray. Kill. I'll kill Captain Marvel and uh, I don't know, fuck Ray. Can't have it be that uh I was tempted to kill Ray because it's impossible. Like even by the rules of this system, it she just evades that. It's Captain Marvel though. Yeah, Captain Marvel has the same thing happening really. The plot. Yeah, protects I'd want to kill Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel seems more powerful than Ray. Well, I did in mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And I could put up with Kelly Marie Tran because she's not a, she's not an un she she's a pretty lady. They just uglified her for TLJ, which is. Weird. Prequel uh, remake, yes or no? Prequel remake? Nah. 
Yeah, we should focus Disney's on other things. Now. They well, fuck it up. Unless the, the spirit of the question is just like, do you think it could be worthwhile to do it in perfect circumstances? In which case, I guess yes, but that yeah, would go for would pretty much so. anything. When, almost anything. Yeah. Why not make I mean, this thing? They're at a point. They're at a point now where in our memory where they're not bad. Like they're they're bad. Like the movies are bad, but they're beloved by a lot of people. And I kind of just want to keep that. Yeah, under the current system, it's like, why the hell would we want Disney to remake the prequels? <laughs> like, it's... Yeah. God. Just don't have them make anything. The droids are remote-controlled by the droid ship. Yes. Yeah. Boat slapped. Uh, the... The battle droids... Hello? When I say BRB, it means I'm going for a sec. God. Wait, what? Mahler, are you there? No, I died. Full goes. Oh, all right. Dead. It's all over. I have inherited EFAP. My new empire. <laughs> Your new Your empire. empire. How dare you say such a thing? Ah. Bastard. You bastard. The battle droids' rules of engagement seem to suggest that they are anti piracy guards for hire, not hardened combat units. You think he'd be better? Do you think they'd be better if that was true? Handrails? Who needs them near a reactor? I don't know. I, probably. That's how they weed out <laughs> the shitty ones. Why would the Viceroy send his army into an open field and leave himself and the palace defenseless? Shad would be very upset. Um, they did keep a, a decent chunk of droids with them, and it was Palpatine that told them to do it, right? He's like... Phew. Wipe them and there out. were tanks outside. It's not like he's completely defenseless. And um, again, I w I think I would s I would square my argument on they were told to do it by Palpatine. Palpatine finds it useful because if the Viceroy are deposed and everything goes, whatever happens at this point, he's going to get what he wants. Uh, he might already have it at that point because uh, we don't know what's happening in the Senate while we're at Naboo. City has told them to wipe them out, so that's what they're going to do. Interrogate the surviving fi fighters to find the civilian Gungans and wipe, wipe, wipe. Oh, I don't, I don't, I th I'm pretty sure when they accept the surrender from the Gungans, it's still weird because they were told to wipe them out. Yeah, wipe them out. It's like, oh, so accept their peaceful surrender? Like, I, no. I guess so. <laughs> Fucking shoot them in the face. Hi, Muller and Rags. Can you both say, and Marcus was like, pa, while whispering? You go first. I don't know what, how to deliver that. It's E A H. Pa. And so it's like, and Marcus was like, pa? I don't know. I guess so. And Marcus so was like, So do we like, have to do it pa. while whispering? Pop that microphone. And Marcus was like, pa. And Marcus was like, pa. There you go. We did it. I know what it means, though. Can you guys see my super chats? Yes. Yeah. We've only just gotten a few more just to make sure. Uh, funny seeing the chat defend the prequels using the same tactics and logic of those who defend the sequels. Rich Evans, greater than Anomaly Inc. Five four six seven three eight one two nine. Wow, TLJ is better than the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, huh? Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. They shot who? I flash. What? Flash for me? Uh. Deja vu, I've just been in this place before, higher on the street, and I know it's my time to go. Is Rags a fairy like YMS? Nah. Some early aircraft carriers were hilariously badly designed. They had fuel lines and ventilation systems which turned them into fuel air bombs from minimal battle damage. Poor training made it work. <laughs> you say, like, we could have really shittily designed stuff because that happened in real life. It's like that. Yeah, you can, but for the most part, things are designed fairly well. Especially spaceships, you'd think. Lots riding on those working. It's like airplanes are designed really, really well, and they're extremely safe. I don't know that spaceships in the future would be, like, even more so. 
That's what happened when you retrofit civilian cargo ships to aircraft carriers, especially if you consider entire scanty doctrine Federation is using. Scanty doctrine? My good. Yoda, back have you to go. Best send you are not. Hmm. Are you guys seriously criticizing scene where design floor is being used to take down an enemy ship when that's the entire plot of episode four? Yes, I am, because that's not the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. These are not, they're, they're only similar in the most broadest of context to the point of uselessness. Are you guys seriously Anakin criticizing a film by accident that's called Star Wars? does this. Yeah, they're not the same thing at all. Just pretending like they are. Uh, bend the rules, we will. Bend over, you should. <laughs> Wrong. Council already said yes. Yoda was against it. Yeah, that, that final bit is odd when you, but when you really look at the language, he, he's trying to say the council's approved of it and that he doesn't. Uh, buying Shmi is technically taking part in the slave trade, and it was supposed to show that the Jedi and Republic are too aloof and useless. I don't know. I think, I think we needed to address that. Specifically, the Shmi situation. Halloween is witch and demon worship. Christmas is superior, especially thanks to the elven slavery. Orcs are forced into coal mines. Oh my god. Slave the elves. Anna and Jay are Luke and Leia. Oh. I volunteer to re-educate Anna. Okay. Uh, seize oh TPM my. leading the polls. I love democracy. <laughs> <laughs> Going through a planet core is crazy, but faster than light travel. Lightsabers and telekinesis is legit. Like I said, I don't believe they actually flew through the specific core of the planet. I'm assuming yeah, that's just think... what they refer to as the place yeah. near the core. Yeah. You're still gonna buy the Blu-rays, right? <laughs> Rags, you gay. Pretty well, cool technically buy, but whatevs. Close enough. Debates are the big gay. Rags, don't be gay. When is TFA Part 4 gonna be out? Oh, <laughs> This century is definitely what I can say. Rags, you're okay, I won't shave you this time. Oh, well. That's nice. You should Thank do you. more writing and editing, Street. Um, I I always found those to be redundant because I would end up spending more time responding or chatting with chat instead of working. I, I did oh, do a few of them back you. in the day, and then I was like, talking to people about my work makes it so I work less, and I was like, damn, I'm destroying the whole point. Then the last one says, stealth chat, and that is it for the prequel debate stream. Wow, those weren't that bad. I thought it would be worse, actually. Yeah, that was too bad. I thought we were going to be told about the worst things in the world. Detrimental to the apocalypse, uh, either way, I actually am not going to be able to continue. For, uh, but I, I feel like it's a good way to sort of end it. We've got... Yeah. The next set is the Super Chat uh, catch-up that we did for the EFAP before that. So we'll catch up on the catch-up. <laughs> and then we've got the EFAP we recently did. So the logic here will be that if we don't get to these in the next EFAP, they will be gotten to in the next catch-up. If we don't do another catch-up this week, because there's lots to catch up on. Um, thank you all. It's all because of the incredible, generous audience that we have, that yes. we even have to do these. It's not a bad problem to have at all. I will say that. And we will get to all of them. They cannot defeat us. It will happen. I'm, 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 I think we did that pretty efficiently. Awesome. Hours for 10 hours done. Yeah. Um, more memes <laughs> are on the way, impressive. and uh, I guess more more streams are on the way. We got the next one planned is 7 p.m. BST on Saturday with your boy Evan Munro, Critical Drinker, and a new guest, someone who has been requested a couple of times and was was talk I talked to him about coming on like a year ago, and it's not Gokunaro, it's someone else. And when I talked to him, I was like, oh my god, it's been so long since I've actually set up. Finally coming, and you guys are gonna be like, "Oh wow. my god, I know that guy!" And uh, yes, it's not tonal, no. <laughs> and it's uh, Paul Giamatti, we got uh, him. And we will. It will not be a prequel arc uh, video stream. It's something else. But <laughs> you'll like it. Yeah, I think I'll like it. It'll be it'll be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, thank you for uh, chilling out with us today. And of course, for watching the mainline episodes. This will be re-uploaded to uh, Mooler in no time. And I'll try and put Return of the King out like two days from now. We'll see if it works. How very exciting. 
Fingers crossed. Thank you so very much for being so very generous, everybody. And uh, yeah, always you. nice thank to you, chat with you. you. We shall catch you on Saturday, if not earlier. See you Saturday, everybody. Bye.